What is going on, everybody? Jumbo Thick here. We are back with more Emberfell Whispers from the Stars. This is our fifth edition D&D campaign. This is, of course, um, I will be your GM, your DM for the night, Jumbo Thick, joined by technically the full cast and crew. Uh, we are missing Zoom for now, but um, he will be joining us uh, shortly, hopefully, having some technical difficulties, as is the case with all things. Uh, involving computers and the internet but uh, let's give a brief introduction so we can dive in because I'm excited to pick up where we left off so let's start off with uh, Tristan Varel Doopy 209 what's going on everybody Tristan Varel play the high elf time wizard uh, roughly 200 years old about 6 foot tall if you listen to this long you get the gist, get the gist. Uh, Tristan Indeed, indeed you do. And of course, that leads us into the beautiful, the lovely, Dan Decker. I was not expecting that. I know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, yeah, Dan here playing uh, <clears throat> Mo Broadjaw. He's a eight foot tall bugbear, uh, basically uh, Chewbacca Wharf. And, Chewbacca um, Wharf. Chewbacca Wharf. That way, it's that way. It is intellectually distinct from any other properties that, yes. that anyone might know. Um, yeah, carries a very large crossbow. He's usually pretty good with it. Um, tends to tends to snipe fools and and smoke fools left and right. Um, very large bolts that and, uh, yes. come flying out of him. And uh, and yeah, overall though, you know, he likes to he likes to kick up the dust. Kick on up the dust. Yeah. Which then will bring us to the ever robed and garbed Kayla. Yep. Hello, um, I am Kayla. I play the role of Valerie. I am a 5'11", 257-year-old, um, former elf turned damn pure barbarian. Um, as most people would know by now, I love to use my claws. I do technically carry a great sword, hand axe, and javelin, but... You just don't get to see those very often because you really need them. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Had them on your back the whole time. You know. <laughs> Javelin, great sword. Yes. Love it. Love it. Uh, which will then bring us to, uh, last but not least for now, the son of Amu. Hello, everyone. I am Jumbo Smooth. I'll be playing the role of Rogar, the son of Amu this evening. He's a seven foot five, 400 pound dragonborn, uh, searching for his father. Um, likes to hunt and do things out in the wild. Um, perhaps one day he'll be able to slay a hive creature Ooh. quick enough to collect its teeth. Mm. Indeed, indeed. Squad goals, one would say. Um, regardless, though, last we left off, the crew here, the party, um, had decided after their previous adventure, making a, a little bit of a name them for themselves around the small village of Conwich, as you had thwarted a strange and bizarre story involving what will be told from here on as the Conwich Horror. Um, not to be de, you know disputed with any other intellectual property out there. Uh, regardless, though. After slaying said creature, you took a little bit of time within the, uh, the town itself, collecting yourselves, recovering, maybe taking a little, you know, um, uh, you taking a little me time, you know, a little ref self-reflection, building yourselves up. You decided upon, um, after a month passing, and the town of Conwich being all but um, held hostage by the uh, pirate ship, the Sea Hag, run by an in a Captain Crestfallen. That's about all you've got. He's a bit of a mysterious figure as of yet. All you really know is that he wants Rogar's head for some reason. Um, regardless, though, you decided at Bors's request to aid the town in getting rid of these near you do wells To do so, you met up with Krellix, a uh, interesting goblin from your past. And he gave you a little bit of insight on the inner workings of the town currently. You, It is midnight currently, middle of the night, very dark out here. The rings 
that uh, circle Emberfell um, are glowing brightly. It is a clear sky. Um, you can see the stars above in retrospection of those that are gone. Regardless, though, um, you infiltrated the walls and managed to take out one of the three gun towers that are manned with black powder weapons rather Rip easily. Bernie. Yes, you have a man propped up that looks like uh, Bernie. Um, you did discover that the Water's Rest, the uh, Temple of Boel, is encased in some kind of magical protection of some kind and decided to move from there towards the docks, perhaps securing a ship, um, or at least that, that's what the initial idea I thought was, some kind of vessel to make your way out to the sea hack as it has been moored um, quite a distance away from shore, uh, probably within range of the cannons. Uh, regardless though, on your way there, you came across a group of these pirates um, talking about uh, possibly um, interrogating a prisoner, you followed them and discovered uh, three indi or four individuals locked up. One of them being Bucket, um, three other more important individuals, slaying everybody inside rather quickly, I might add, and rescuing and liberating um, these. Uh, former crewman of the Morag uh, Bitter Snout Trading Company. The, all of them had a little bit of unique uniqueness to them, but the one in question that is currently with you, as I believe uh, Brian and the female Hobgoblin, as well as Bucket, who was still passed out, stayed behind to kind of collect themselves, possibly heal a little bit up, where Ukul, the turtle with the strange carvings, markings, the kind of bone chimes dangling from his person uh, informed you that he wanted his staff is what he referred to it as. And he was coming with you as you were trekking past the docks to the, uh, the former town hall, which has now been set up to be some kind of mess or also a, uh, a, a canteen, a, ca a cafeteria of a kind as well as a um, uh, barracks. However, with your conglomerate stealth roll, Trist being in front, you'd made it all the way to that section. Um, to you, You'd gotten to within 100 feet of the actual building when a noise was made and three individuals that were taking a piss turned back and saw Trist standing there. I said, who the hell are you? And he just kind of looked at him and then said a little something. And now we're rolling initiative. So I need everybody to go ahead and roll me initiative real quick. Because we're in it. We're in it right off the bat. Let's see how this goes. That's terrible. It is terrible indeed. Pretty awful. Pull my sheet real fast. Okay. Let me game log. Boom. All right. So I've got a. Ba, ba, ba. Who's at the top? I think Zoom's at the top, I think. Let me roll. Yes. Zoom is definitely going to be at the top. I've got Zoom, Velry, Trist, Rogar, Mo. Correct? Yes. That's correct. Second, please. All right. So, first up, an initiative order. It's going to Zoom immediately. You guys are all you're you're somewhat behind. Um, I'll say you're probably behind like a, a like a food cart stand. All of you have kind of been sneaking together at this point. Um, I believe was it Rogar that failed? One of you failed pretty badly, uh, which brought the uh, which brought the the uh, DC down for them to be able to see you. However, um, the only person currently out in the open is Trist. So, boom, 
you are behind the rest of you are behind cover somewhat what would you like to do zoom there are three individuals within we'll probably say 30 feet of you guys you are also muted right now zoom <laughs> well let's see so they're about 30 feet in front of us and they're right next to each other because they're all peeing yes Okay. One of them, they've all kind of turned around at this point, p- pulled up <sighs> their pantaloons. Okay. And well, let's see. Okay. Okay. Okay, I don't have to. All right, so the guy that's in the middle, is he wearing anything? Um, you know what, surely they're wearing shirts. I'm going to cast darkness on the middle one shirt. Okay, all right. I believe there is a DC for that if you cast it on an object. Yeah, let's see. Usually there is. The darkness emanates from the object and moves with it, completely covering the source of the darkness. If any of the spells area overlaps with an area of light created by a spell, I don't. Doesn't say anything. That. No. There is for sure with light. Let me just check real fast. Hang on. I'll check real fast. Just copy paste it into the chat if that helps. Sometimes there is a. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I don't think there is. I think it just happens. Here we go. <laughs> uh, the darkness. Nope. There is. I can't believe it. Ironically, <laughs> there is a save for the light spell, but there is no save for the darkness spell. That might be uh-huh. a oversight, but it's not in the rules, so I'll okay. take it. I love oversight. All right, so you kind of um, is this? So I do believe this is vocal at least. So is this like um, you kind of stand piece. up and you do a little ditty, or well, how, do, how does this work? How does this look? I just want to do like a little, a little twitty little whistle, and then when I'm finished doing that. Mm-hmm. on the middle guy I'm going to if I'm given the option I guess as a bonus action could I do my cantrip um, message to Trist sure yeah oh yeah then I'm going to message Trist tell him that I've cast darkness and you can like move out to the side I'm going to tell him who I cast it on and which direction he needs to move okay. so we'll get out of it all right well it it's it's twenty feet from them, so they're they're in the center, twenty feet. It wouldn't be touching any of you guys as of yet. Okay. Um, however, it is on that person, so as soon as they start moving, it's gonna move with them. <laughs> so I'll have to roll a random die to see what direction he moves. However, as of right now, there's like a a dome like shape of uh, of this like dark shadowy um, sphere that just appears, and the, right uh, right before you, encompassing a, a good a good section of this outside portion um, near the uh, the town hall. And as it springs up into existence, the three individuals kind of, ah, 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 they're, they're freaking out in there um, as it is complete magical darkness. Um, Trist, you might be familiar with this, but uh, I'm assuming that's your, any of your turns in? Yes. Okay. All right. We can just move along. Just kind of move along, which then brings me to Valry. It's your turn. Okay. So is this, um, does that affect anything? Like if I move into the darkness, is that going to mess up anything? You can see nothing. Magical darkness is different than regular darkness, unless you have a blind sight or um, the ability to see through magical darkness, which I don't think any of you do right now. Mm-hmm. It would just keep moving. <laughs> Man, hell, they were gonna call the alarm anyway. Let's just get the hell out it's up of to here. You. Okay. Now you can move in, Velry. Mm-hmm. I'll probably have you roll a perception test at disadvantage mm-hmm. to get in the area. Or you know what? I'll let you just do it at regular, um, and then. Honest. And then it will, uh, your your attack will be at disadvantage if you do find somebody, because you can't. Mm, see. But it could also be just a straight roll if I like. Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah. But you will have to roll perception chest just to see if you can find someone inside. If you were gonna run inside. 
-hmm. you have plenty of movement to do so. Yeah. They were, we were headed to find the staff, right? And yeah, you, you guys him. were just about a hundred feet from the building. Um, mm -hmm. So they started shouting. You don't know what's going on over there. You haven't seen anything yet. Mm -hmm. We'll, we'll go from here though. Could just dash away, I suppose, but. It's an option. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm going. I'm gonna just run in there real quick just to see if I okay. can you so know. You can find somebody. Give me mm -hmm. give me a perception test. Okay. It'll be just regular. You definitely you kind of um, you kind of dash in memorizing where they were before. Mm -hmm. And you, it's not like they're, they're not like trying to stealth or anything. They're being kind of loud and sound does emanate. It's just no visual as soon as you enter into the, uh, or which might be slightly unsettling for you in particular, um, because you're used to being able to see at all times, no matter what. So the absence of any kind of light, um, any kind of, uh, visual source might be a little jarring, but you do kind of run in relying on some of your more primal senses. And you mm -hmm. do kind of bump into somebody, mm -hmm. so you can I'm make it. You can make attacks if you want. Um, mm -hmm. They are at disadvantage, but if you do reckless, they'll be. You know, it'll just cancel out. It'll be straight roll. Right. Okay. But um, because I always rage, I'm kind of, if I don't rage, do I still get the four? I still get four call. Claw attacks, or is it just two? No, you have to rage to actually get the claw attacks. That's part of it. Right. You're right. Yeah. Mm. So you, we could see you unsheath that greatsword for the first time uh, if you want to, <laughs> or not. That's up to you. Um, but I, would get, I still get two attacks with the greatsword. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's up to you. Um, yeah. I don't feel. I'm just seeing if I can, like, hush them up real quick. Um, Okay. By, you know, slicing off their heads or something. All right. Uh, let's do a normal roll for the great sword, I guess. Okay. I do, I, now, get, correct me if I'm wrong, You and you might know this as well, um, Rogar. You can reckless even if you're not raging, right? Can, can you check? Can you check for me? Uh, I'll see. check. I'm going to check. I'm I sure. think you can. I'm not 100%. He'll, you guys just check real fast. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't say you have to Doesn't say? It. So it you're says, good. You're yeah. good. You're yeah. good. Oh, I can wreck with that. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Go ahead and make just make a straight attack roll with your great sword. Mm -hmm. God, it's still gonna, it's probably gonna still gonna rip. Yeah, it definitely hits. Go ahead and roll damage. You might just kill this guy in one one swipe. Uh yeah, you cleave this man in half. He's sitting there. He's, huh, huh, oh, what the hell? And just down the middle, ah, there's a smattering of fresh blood on everybody. Like, oh, oh God, ah. People are freaking out. Um, there's two people next to you to still. It. No, they can't see. They blood splatters across they them feel all. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they feel yeah. it all. It's horrifying. Um, mm. You do have a second attack. Mm -hmm. I'll let you make another one next to somebody next to you if you'd like. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, that will hit. You have mm -hmm. a good chance of slicing this man in half as well. Uh, yep. Yep. You also cut down another one. You just, mm -hmm. one of them instantly dead. And then the other one, take a, you probably, you, you think you took a head off. You're not sure. Um, it's still mm -hmm. complete mm -hmm. darkness. Sure, another sure. body hits the floor. Um, it's hit the floor. They do. Uh, would you like to do anything else, Valerie? <laughs> Um, I guess, do I have enough movement to move back out and then like whisper that, you know, I think there's only one left. Yeah, you can, you can move out now. They, the, uh, the other guy next Ooh. to you will get an attack, but right. it is, a, it is a disadvantage because he can't see you. Um, if you want to, if you want to do it, that's up to you though. Or I guess I, can I, I, they're, I'm cl they're close enough. If I just say, I think there's only one left as a bonus action. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, there's no, there, yeah, there's no dampener on voice here. People okay. are screaming and dying right now. Well, then I'll probably 
Mm, ooh, question. Yes. I don't know if you know that. If I stay in the darkness and someone comes in, would they, and they, would there's a chance of them hitting me? If they. I mean, mm, there's always a I chance. I feel like there is. Mm. <laughs> there's mm-hmm. always a chance. <laughs> I'm going to run out then. Okay. I'll take uh, the. Yeah. He'll, he'll get an attack of opportunity. Okay. Uh, um, a 10 is not going to hit you because this that's is not. a disadvantage. So that's not going to matter. You feel something, you feel like something swipe towards you. Ah! Ah! Bob, where are you? Bob! <laughs> Swipes, and then nothing but air as you kind of scamper out. Um, coming out for the first time, um, all of you see Valerie holding the great sword that's always been on her person. You know, I knew it was there the whole time. Of course I did. <laughs> Slick with blood all the way to the hilt. Um, smattered across her face as well. She kind of steps out. Like lick the blood off the, you know. Of course she does. <laughs> Her tongue slightly elongates more than it should and kind of licks it off. It's kind of creepy. But it is what it is. Um, as that happens, that brings us to Trist. It's actually your turn. Those guys scream out. There's, they did. Loudly. Yes. All right. Um, I will make like a... Are they peeing on a fence or a building? They were just kind of yeah. They were just kind of near um, near one of the buildings nearby. Can I reach the corner of that building? Sure. Yeah, no problem. Um, you we'll will the corner. Probably pass through the darkness for a moment. You wouldn't be near the person though. Just okay. it might be a little jarring. I will move there and then mm-hmm. I will hold an action. What are you holding? I'm going to hold the momentary stasis. Okay. All right. Now, is it, that it turns over? Is that considered a spell? Uh, it just says it's an action. I consider it a spell because I have to make a save. Because I'm trying to decide. Because if nothing appears, then it would be expended like a spell. Yes. Are you good with that? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. So we'll just say that it's kind of like holding like a like a spell, basically. Yeah. So, and right. in my pocket, ready to. Are you, so I'm, you're waiting for if someone was to appear out of the mess. Yeah, the darkness yeah. guy, oh. or if someone you know. Okay, pops basically, up if, you, if you see an enemy within range, we'll, we'll just go with yes. that. No right. And how? And it's how long's the range? Thirty feet. Sixty. Sixty. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Okay. So, so Trist moves for, moves forward past the the man that's still screaming, and hit goes to the corner and um, is, is looking towards your objective. That will then bring me to uh, Son of Amun, Rogar, it's your turn. All right. Um, Rogar, there's still some people in the darkness, right? There's one guy in there that you know of. Uh, Valerie slew two of them gruesomely. Rogar is going to take his great club and he's going to run into the darkness. Okay. uh, I, I do have blind sight. He does. 30 you, feet. You can, and you can smell them. You smell the fresh blood. You smell, you can, you can almost hear the quiver in the man's voice. Bob! Bob! You know exactly where he is. There's no, no disadvantage, no anything. You kind of. Um, I question, I get advantage for attacking him because he's in darkness, correct? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. You don't have to. Yeah, okay. you get advantage because, because. You can see him, and he can't see you technically, so you get advantage on it okay. no matter what. Yeah. Then I am going to uh, just attack. Great weapon master. <laughs> oh, great uh, weapon master. Why not? Why not? I'll just do this, this guy. See. Yeah, I'm fine. It's gonna be fine. Oh, I miss a five and a two. A twelve. A 12. Oh, is that is that a twelve total? Uh, no, that would be uh, actually that's a minus five. Oh, minus five. Two. Oh yeah, you uh, miss. You seven. Miss. You miss. You miss big time. I'm sorry. That's that's like cut yeah, it. I'm, I'm not going to great web master second time. Go ahead. <sighs> Good roll. Great web master. You know what? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do great web master. I can't help myself. <laughs> why not? Help myself. Why not? I can't help yourself. It's gonna be great. That's uh, definitely gonna hit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so here. you're gonna putty this guy into oblivion. Ooh, uh, that'll be 22 points 22 of damage. Points oh, yeah. Uh, he had 11 hit points. So, 
So how does this happen, Rogar? You can't. Uh, well, you can kind of tell. No you can't he is. see him. Yeah, but um, Rogar will kind of go in there, and um, you will see Bob shortly, and then <gasps> just <laughs> no, <laughs> try to like club him against the wall. You know, yeah. just clink. Okay. And there is a smattering of blood across you, Rogar, as you cave in his chest and it expels from his mouth and probably his eyeballs and his nose. Blood just spatters across you, pull it back and a, a sickening flop of his body hits the ground and it is deeply disturbing. To most people, probably not you though. Um, Rogar will uh, uh, then uh, exit out of the darkness. Um, uh, the you're gonna just gonna kind of ease out. Well, there's no there's no one that left in there, right? It's still the spell stays until he drops concentration. Yeah. yeah. Well. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. You don't okay. sense any other people. Yeah, there was only three people in there. Okay. Cool. Uh, then yeah. Um, Rogar will leave. Um, okay. Kind of. Yep. Step out as you do. The large, the large torch. Sling the the blood off my. Yeah, my club just you kind of sling it down. Ukul standing there. He's 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 big. He's about seven feet tall. Um, massive, big, heavy shell. Mm. He just kind of nods his head at the very quick response everyone took, slaying these individuals. Okay. So, um, yeah, that will finish my turn. Okay. That's the end of Rogar's turn. We're still technically in initiative, just for now, even though everyone is dead. Um, just to see what uh, what anybody wants to do anything. So that would bring us to Moog. Uh, and there are no enemies. Not as as far as you as far as you could tell. You saw the three people, and Velry slew two. Rogar just came walking out slowly. Um, you assume everyone's dead. What else? Trist is still at the corner. He moved up further ahead to take take a point on uh, your objective for now. I'll, uh, seeing that everything appears to be handled, I'll follow Trist. Okay, you kind of move up behind Trist. Um, Moog, since you're kind of, since all, you're in a more relaxed state right now, go ahead and give me a perception test. <laughs> 18? All right. Moog, as you're moving up, um, uh, crossbow, I'm assuming? Uh, no, I'm carrying my hammer and my shield. Okay, you move up carrying the hammer. And um, as you all are, are, you're moving past most everybody else, uh, moving up behind Trist, you start taking stock of, uh, of nearby uh, noise sources, trying to see if maybe you've been discovered. And you kind of crouch down next to Trist for a moment, um, taking, uh, listening, perceiving, and as you look out, you look towards the pit and you hear a lot of chatter, screaming. Ah! You don't quite hear an alarm coming from that direction, at least. Perhaps they're either too far away or it's too noisy for them to have distinguished the cries of death from, uh, from the uh, nearby the individuals. Yeah, exactly, from the pits. And then you look, you look towards the barracks, the mess. And as you do, you hear shuffling noises on the inside and you hear somebody, oh, sounded like somebody screaming nearby. Ah, sit your ass down, we're playing a game. That's what you hear, Mo. Would you like to do anything? You still have, you still technically have an action. Yeah. Uh, how far away was the, were the voices? They're inside. They are inside the structure. How close am I up to Trist? Uh, you're next to Trist, and the structure is going to be about. It was about sixty feet. Well, it was about a hundred feet, but we'll say that the building itself is is close. I'll use my action to uh, hide. Make a stealth check. Okay, yeah, go ahead and give me stealth check. Eh. 12, yeah, we'll see. Gonna go change keep my dice. We'll keep, we'll keep that in mind. 
Um, all right, that then the brings me to Ukul, who's finally his turn. And kind of lumbers past um, most of you um, up near uh, Moog and Trist, not stealthy whatsoever. Um, boldly walking out. Come, we claim my symbol. The dredger will take all these souls. And he's just walking towards the building, towards the front door. We're out of initiative at this point. So Tristan. He didn't see us. Who, Ukul? Yeah. Oh, no, he's with us. God damn it, Moog. God to the damn dragon. it, Moog. What? Yes, Ukul is with you, yeah. the giant turtle. Um, he is, he's walking towards the structure. So what are you guys doing? Oh, I say we let him be the bait. <laughs> um, is, are the bodies kind of in an obvious place, like right in the middle of a path? That no one can be- see anything. There is a ball of darkness over them. Unless somebody was, unless somebody was really looking, because you have to remember it's also night outside. No one okay. is going to find this, <laughs> this, this site of this massacre. Um, it's up to you. Is my ball of darkness in the middle of a path? No. no. Okay, so it's kind of off to the side. Yeah. There's and okay. the the light sources that were nearby are, I do believe, they are snuffed out uh, because of the spell. Perfect. So. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then we can just leave these for now. Yep. Are you going to maintain concentration? Um, until there's a reason not to. Okay. All right. So you kind of begin sauntering up. The rest of you, um, what are you doing? Ukul is moving ahead unless somebody is doing something. Is this open space between us and yes? Where he's there's going? just wide open space between between this building and the next, and he is just boldly walking. There is no stealth happening right now. Tristan's just going to sit and watch. Okay. What about the rest of you? That seems smart. Sit and watch, that is not... Uh, Rogar is going to try to get into a... Or he's going to try to look at the building and see if he can find a, a vantage point, maybe, that... Um, okay. Once Ugo starts to, like, walk through the front door... He's getting for the front door, right? Oh, he's moving right towards the front door, yes. The okay. one that Zoom is in- intimately familiar with. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Go and give me Rogar a perception is- test. Okay. Yeah. Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. The front door is obvious. There are some windows, and you will remember this is a, a taller building. Like it, it, it should be. Um, think of it like a like a classical church kind of building, big, big, large space. Um, there are some windows. They're very high up, and they're they're kind of slits on this side of the building. You do know from previous experience, Rogar, for just from coming in and out of town. There is a a larger window um, in the kitchen area on the other side that Zoom attempted to uh, escape through uh, so long ago. Um, that might be a possible mode um, means of ingress. Um, outside of that, you're not really seeing anything. You could attempt to maybe get on the roof. Um, it's not like a, it's not like a pitched roof. It's a flat roof, just like uh, the previous building that you snuck into. There might be an entrance up there. You're not sure. It is. This is a two. The equivalent of a two-story building, though. Can I? Are you going to try? <clears throat> oh, sorry. Yes, Valerie. Okay, can I try and stealth my way up to the roof and see if there's anything up there? Okay. So are you going to move? You're just going to just move stealth. really quickly up there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Go stealth. ahead and give me a stealth check. You do have advantage because of your yeah. cloak. Mm, natural. Natural twenty. Uh, 25 total. It's impressive. Um, despite all of you seeing Valerie, she kind of crouches down and kind of shifts over to the left and almost becomes one with the darkness of the, the shadows and light. And you, none of you, all of you kind of lose sight of her because I believe even Trist, your passive isn't, isn't high enough. I don't think so. Yeah, no, it's not. Your investigation is not your perception. So yeah, every, everyone loses sight of Valerie. She kind of disappears. Um, with your speed, Valerie, you can easily pass Ukul. 
Um, he's he's actually surprisingly slow and uh, calm. You kind of dart around and you easily start scaling up the um, the side here. Uh, go ahead and give me a perception test real fast. Dear God, 23. Okay, so Valerie is seeing everything right now. Maybe it's the fresh blood she just licked up. She's like, it's like that moment in Blade where you're like seeing heartbeats on the inside of the building here. Um, fresh meat, perhaps. As you are walking up the side, there are those little small slit windows I was uh, explaining earlier. Not enough for a medium-sized humanoid to probably fit through. Perhaps a small creature could. Um, or perhaps somebody that was angry enough could rip a hole open and just shove their way in. That could be a possibility. Uh, regardless, though, you stop for a moment to kind of peek in. And let me pull this up real fast. Just to make sure I got everything. Okay. You see within... You see eight individuals um, within. The town hall is, uh, it, it's in a similar state to what, you, what you've seen previously. However, where there were those kind of pews set up, um, those have all been uh, moved, kind of pushed up against the, the wall. So there's a big open space. In the center of the space, there is a, um, there is uh, almost like a, uh, what's the word? Not a tent, but like a, uh, a barrier that's been set up um, with just uh, flaps material. And it looks like um, perhaps the back half of this building has been is being cordoned off for some reason. There's just like canvas material up. You're not sure what's on the other side uh, the front half. You see that there is a uh, there are several tables. I mean, it looks like this has become like a dining area. And of course, the, the kitchen, you can see into the kitchen, um, there is a rather large, several large barrels um, open. And with that very good perception test, you can smell alcohol wafting from them. Um, there appears to be tons of food laid out on uh, elongated tables as well, um, almost like buffet style uh, for people to come get food whenever they want. It looks uh, good, for, like it's, it's rather well, uh, smells decently uh, seasoned. And at one of these, one of these tables in the center, you see the uh, you see about five people um, sitting around, and it looks like they're all around the table. One of them uh, is a a very uh, well. Most of all of these people in here appear to be um, crestfallen individuals in some way or fashion. Four of the people at the table just look kind of like the simple individuals that you've run across so far, the kind of standard crestfallen pirates. However, one of them appears to be a very um, sickly looking one, like sunken cheeks. Um, uh, not necessarily a pale complexion, but just an unhealthy looking complexion. And he has a bit of a, a, a sly, crooked grin, Hobgoblin. Um, his clothes look they look like at one point they would have been um, uh, they would have been like fancy clothes, but they look like they have they have seen better days. They look a little a little tattered, uh, used, mended several times, um, kind of like a down on your luck uh, nobility kind of look. And this individual has uh, has a rather gaudy ring on his finger, and. All of these people appear to have cards in their hands. In the center of the table, there are piles of uh, of gold and silver and copper and items and things. The cards are placed on the table and you hear the sickly man, enough of this shit. We're playing a real game now. You see him kind of flick his wrist and there's dice in his hand. It's like they're about to start another game. Um, towards the door, you see a, a more seasoned individual, a straw hat Ronin is by the door, kind of um, lounging back against the, uh, against the door, smoking a pipe. 
um, his his hat covered down low, lounging, not really in a state of readiness. Um, as well, you see a is that right? Yeah, yeah. As well, you see another individual um, moving towards the more sickly person, whom after this description you would recognize him as Van, 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 the uh, individual that Ukul was talking about, the one that took his staff. And this uh, individual appears to be a very sultry, beautiful woman, um, very scantily clad dressed, uh, appears to be a hobgoblin female. I mean, I'm, I'm very like, we're talking about like Princess Leia slave bikini or garb or here. Kirk? This, no, this is someone walking, they're walking towards Vaughn, towards Van. Oh, okay. And she kind of um, puts her arms around him. Come on, let's just let's just go in the back for a moment. He's like, no, 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 no. maybe in a minute, maybe in a minute. He kind of pushes her away. And um, you see several of the men at the table are kind of like almost begin drooling, staring at her. And she just kind of, then she uh, goes to move towards the um, the buffet. With that perception test, you would also hear past the barrier. You would hear the sounds of um, of uh, coitus, perhaps one might say. We'll leave it at that. So oh there may, there's a minimum of two more people further past. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. Um, that you can't see, but you that's what you take as you're kind of sitting there staring through the window. And there was no real like opening on the roof, just like I'd have to like pry it apart. Not or that, do not that extra. you could not that yeah. you could see. You do you don't see anything on the roof. Now that doesn't mean there's not something a different place, like maybe on the backside, but just in the direction you're going, you don't see any other entrances. A lot to take in. Mm-hmm. Rogar, where's Rogar at now? Where are you at, Rogar? Rogar would have been mad. Seeing Rogar was going to head towards the large window. Okay. Um, so you kind of you're kind of skirting around the side. Then I'm um, going to give me stealth check, Rogar. Oh boy. Oh yes. Boy. Do it. Do it. Nine. Nine. Son of a. We'll keep that in mind. As you are moving, you're kind of, you kind of crouch low, your hunter instincts kicking in. Um, the thrill of battle upon you. You oh, kind of move yeah. past, Ukul kind of looks over towards you. You're like, I'm so hidden right now. And he just kind of stares at you as you walk past. And he's just stomping towards the front door. That fool, Tortle, he does not even know why I'm there. I'm here. As you move around to the side, you begin moving around to the side towards the towards the large window that you know of. Um, <laughs> Mo, what are you doing right now? I'm going to um, go behind Rogar. Okay, with your previous stealth check, I love it. <laughs> yes. Or I can, or yes. I can, I can take nope. another stealth check. No, nope. we're going nope. with the old one. We're going with the open, okay? So, Ro, Mo, because you know, if you're he's like, getting you're in a like, scrap, you're like, I want to get in the scrap yeah. too. You're like, you see, you see, Rogar, like, oh yeah, you know, you you can follow him. And as oh, you yeah. walk past, you see, you you don't you don't necessarily see Mo, but um, the turtle turns his head and sees Mo also pretty past. <laughs> I'm so quiet right now. I'm <laughs> moving past a lot of them. Um, Zoom, where are you going to be, or what would you like to do right now? So. I'm watching Rogar and Mo be very not stealthy yes. working their way over there. Okay. And yes. Tristan is very quietly still hiding and holding his action. Yes. Well, technically I think that's expended by okay. him. But, okay. um, but uh, you, Trist, you're still holding back Trist, correct? Okay. All right. But Valerie's on the roof. Velry, Velry is like, uh, I will say like right at the corner, like right at the roof where the, where the roof line meets the, uh, meets the wall. Not quite all the way up, unless you want to be, so. I think I'm gonna hang back with Tristan for a little bit. Okay. Um, 
Trist, I will just so we get like angles. Um, you guys are approaching from a diagonal, so if the doors were to open, you wouldn't you'd only be able to see like into the kitchen. Maybe you wouldn't be able to see the rest of the room. Just so you know, yeah. okay. this is where uh, the portal is going. Yes, and this is the he's just he's going straight for the front door. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's where we're at. we're everybody's okay with where they're at right now. All right. Okay. Uko makes the front door at this point, since we're, since this is what we're doing. And you hear, Vaughn! And he kicks the door. And with with a 23, the door just explodes inwards. <laughs> Everyone left him to his devices. The door explodes inwards and just slams in. Now where you're looking down, you see the door hit the guys, you hit like hits Van in the back. Uh, he falls across the table. Shit's just scattered everywhere. Oh, oh what the hell's? Um, the straw hat Ronan at the door immediately is like going for his weapons. Um, I need everybody to roll initiative. <laughs> so let's go ahead and do this. A lot of rolling initiative. Can you tell me what the old sickly man is doing? Uh, well, right now he's um, smacked on the table. Um, because the door hit him in the back. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I've got a nine for Moog. Let's put him in here. I've got a 18 for Bogar. Not bad, not bad. Let's see here. Uh, 13 for Velry. I don't see Trists. 23. 23. It was so high, I couldn't see it. Maybe I should pretend I didn't see it. Uh, 19 for Zoom. All right, let me roll real quick for these guys. Okay. So what were you guys? Yeah. Ooh, Ugh, that's not good. Ooh, shit, that's good for him though. So, uh, just, uh, first up, as the door smashes in, um, Uko is going to give a surprise round. <laughs> just so you know, it's going to happen. Um, it's not technically his turn, but he's going to get a chance to do something since he was right at the door. Um, Uko is going to walk into the door, immediately see the Straw Hat Ronin who's caught off guard. And let me see what he can do here. I don't think he can do what I want him to do right now. Um, no, he can. Yeah, he can do that. You see, is he doesn't have any weapons on in his hands, but Rogar uh, and Velry, you guys, are, and, well, and Mo, you guys are all kind of uh, looking in at these 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 possible entrances, and you see as Ukul lashes out. Uh, that definitely hits. Um, that is going to be... Holy shit! Uh... Let me just make sure something, because that seems like a lot. Uh, yeah, I rolled max damage. Okay. So he reaches out and grabs a hold of this, um this Ronin, he grabs a hold of him by the throat. And as he does, you see as his hand um, suddenly begins to drip almost like black tar. And it's almost as if his hand becomes uh, uh, viscous and the flesh peels off and a skeletal hand comes out from underneath as he grabs a hold of the man's throat. And you watch, you watch as the energy courses through this individual and just necrotic burst from his throat down his chest as he <gasps> and he takes significant damage. He's not dead, but he, he grabs a hold of him, uh, the energy coursing through him, and he kind of tosses him back and begins to move forward. 
Um, the Ronin will get attack of opportunity, which it's going to miss. Skids off the back of a shell, shell too caught off guard as he draws his, his blade and just uh, skims off the back, doing no damage. Um, and he's walking into the room. You can't quite make it to Vaughn, but he's making just a beeline towards towards Vaughn. So this will actually bring us to the actual initiative at this point, being Trist is your turn. Uh, 60 feet from where I am to the building. So it would be 60 feet to the building. It's 100 feet towards that door. Okay. Uh, what's the atmosphere now that a door has been kicked in? Are people are people noticing? Is it people moving around? It depends on what you want to do, Trist. Okay. Um, obviously, there's stuff happening inside the building. There's screams, so on and so forth. If you want to take time to check out the other direction, you can. Or okay. do you want to just passively move and whatever you want to do, you let me know. It would. It, what I'm saying is, if you really want to take time to look, it's going yeah. to be your action. Yes. Um, that is. I'll probably move thirty feet and then look. Okay. Go ahead and give me or a perception look and then test. Move thirty feet. Because I doubt I can see anyone inside that building. Uh, 18. 18? All right. Let's see here. Um, you do hear a... Uh, you do hear a... A small... The hell was that? Um, coming uh, from behind you somewhere as you kind of look back. And you do see a small okay. group of about... Um, it looks like two... It looks like a bugbear and a hobgoblin moving in your direction. They're probably a hundred feet behind you, but one of them has like a, uh, a, a torch with them. So they're illuminated and they're kind of moving like, the hell's happening at the mess. And you do see right. that. I will move 30 feet and mm -hmm. that will be my turn. Okay. Is the end of Trist's turn? I assume I'm standing in like the middle of the, I'm in you the are. open. You are, okay. you're in the open. All right. Um, that will bring me to let me make sure I can do this. Uh, that will bring me to Vaughn, actually. Who's who's uh, gonna going to sit up, kind of oh, push the pulls the, the 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 door off of him. All of the the money and all of the chips and everything are just scattered uh, across the the room here. He's, oh, oh, and he sees the 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 large turtle. Ooh, cool. He's like, oh. How the hell did you get out? And he. He's going to, yeah, he's gonna do it. He's going to reach in and let me make sure I can do this real fast. I don't think he has to make a check, does he? No, he doesn't. So, uh, 60. Yep, that's more than enough, I think. It's not. Oh my god, how is that not enough? He wastes it. You see as he, he rifles into his pockets and he pulls out, um, if Trist was watching, a beautiful magical scroll. And he pulls it up real fast, unfasten it, and begins to read from it. And as it begins to turn to ash in his hand, as the ma magic is expended, there is a burst, a cone towards the turtle. Oh, I need to make a save for the other guy. Oh, God. I have fucked this up real bad because the, uh, yep. There's a dazzling spray of colorful light that just shoots out from where he's standing. And it encompasses Ukul as well as the Straw Hat Ronin behind him. Um, the Ronin immediately, ah, ah, and he starts waving around as if he's blind. Ukul, however, just keeps walking forward. Ah, 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 protect me! Protect me! And he's pointing towards the other guys, and he's gonna like crawl under the table, and he's moving towards the um, the more cordoned off area, and he kind of flaps his way through it, um, shoving it open and disappearing from view. And that is his turn. That will then bring me to the lady 
that was um, at the uh, dining table. She kind of, oh, well, that wasn't very nice. And she looks towards Ukul, and she looks at him. Um, friend, you should just calm down. We're all together in this. He needs to make a wisdom saving throw. My God, I, I, I promise you that stuff is happening right now. And as these words drip from her lips, um, Velry, you're kind of up in the, you, get, you have a better angle on this than everyone else. Um, you see that there's a bit of, uh, her eyes go black for a second, pure black. And um, the uh, Ukul kind of looks towards her and he kind of shakes his head. Your tricks do nothing to Ukul. The dredger will take you all! And she kind of, and kind of starts to back up um, towards the wall at this point. All right. The end of her, her turn. Something else happens. Zoom. It's your turn. Yeah. So there are people coming up behind us on the other yes. side of the darkness. Yes. There are two people. They can't quite, they can't see because of between the darkness and they just kind of heard something in that direction. And in the, oh, geez. Okay, so where are we in position? Like, where's the pit? The pit would be to your west. Um, it is, I mean, it's a good distance away. It's not like right next door or anything. Are there any other buildings nearby? No, not in between. You. There's just the open courtyard is between you guys and where the pit is. There's nothing in between. That's like the, the main kind of hub area. There's probably like carts, abandoned carts and things, probably stacks of materials. So there's little, little bits of cover, but no buildings. <clears throat> this is probably a long shot, but you know, whatever. Um, I want to try, mm -hmm. and I guess I would have to use, oh, which would I use? Performance, maybe. I would like to use message on one of them and just kind of, we need you at the pit. <laughs> Only one person would be able to hear it. No That's one else true. would be able to hear it. That's around. true. You can see them. I'll say that you can see them. Um, give me a deception text. Ay, ay, ay. Please do well. 14. Hold, please. Um, which one are you talking to? The bugbear or the uh, the hobgoblin? Whoever looks dumber. The bugbear looks dumber. To you especially. I mean, the bugbear. you've seen Moke in action. So. Oh, this is true. Bugbear. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, you... You kind of say it, and he's the one holding the uh, the torch, and he kind of stops for a moment. Who said that? And he kind of looks around. Uh, somebody says we need to go to the pit. Something's happening. And the other one. Uh, what do you mean? I thought you thought you said there was something happening at the at, at the barracks. No, no, no. It, a voice just told me to go to the pit. I think we should follow it. I, the hell are you talking about? I, have you been smoking that shit again? No, swear I haven't. Well, we'll go check out the damn pit. We'll come back here later. And they start walking in that direction away. <laughs> All right. So there you go, Zoom. There you go. Um, Son of Amu, it is your turn. So, as I'm looking through the window, yes, um, it's like shutters, right? There's shutters, shutters, yeah. You can see through them. Yeah, this it's like okay. uh, it's like a paper window with like okay. you know, wood shutters. Um, you see, you see, Ukul like made an entrance of himself. Now yes. you can't now because of uh, because this is the kitchen. You can't okay. actually see because there's a bit of a wall. Well, not really a wall. It's more like a, like a lunch lady serving like station so you can counter somewhat yeah. yeah like a counter you can kind of see into the room but you can't see everything you don't see the um sultry woman you saw her at first but you don't anymore 
Um, you saw Va Van, Van, I'm gonna say Van, say Van. You saw Van disappear behind the more like kind of tarp, tarped off section. Um, there are still four individuals um, at tables, at, at the table. They haven't got a chance to do anything yet. They're kind of scrambling for weapons. And the um, Straw Hat Ronin is still kind of like doing this. You still see the like thick um, veins like shuddered out of his neck where there's like necrotic necrosis has set in uh, across most of his body. He's just crying, trying to like feel his way around as if he's blinded. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go through the window. Yes. Um, yes, you do. You know, jump through the window. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's see how good of a jump this is. Give me acrobatics. Oh, God. I just want to see how good athletics. it is. It's going to be acrobatics. Acrobatics? I mean, you're oh, jumping God. through a window. Come on. Exactly. You know, athletic feet. It's going, it's going, it's going acrobatics. Okay. Natural. It's, it's fantastic. <laughs> um, even if it was athletics test, it was a natural one. God. Damn it, Rogar. Oh, so, uh, let's shit. let's let's draw these uh, the fail real fast. Let's draw. Oh. Let's draw. It. For um, a skill check. I'm drawing it. I'm drawing it right now. All right. Okay. Okay. Let's draw it real fast. That's not bad. So, for one round, um, you don't add your da damage bonus. Oh, to your attacks geez. for one round. All right. So it's, just, it's just straight dice rolls for yeah, this round. Straight dice roll. All right. Um, but well, you do make it through that. You do. You do make it through the window. In. You see. You, you kind of. You kind of. Oh, and you kind of stumble. Oh. In. It's ugly. Mo sitting there. You're like, oh shit. He's like his foot gets caught a little bit. Um, yeah. But he makes it in. He's like. And he's like stands up. Oh, he's like Jack Burton in Big not, Trouble. Now I get angry. You know. Now I rage. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, I go if I I guess I still have left movement, I'm gonna go towards uh uh I guess the Ronin that Ronin? was Yeah, I'll I'll say yeah, you can make it to him. Okay. Um I will recklessly attack him. Okay. Um is at this point Rogar. Mm. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say it because you would know. He's blind. Oh. You don't need to recklessly attack him. You get advantage oh. on these strikes. <laughs> yeah. Then I, then I won't. Okay, yeah. Um, I'm just, I'm just, you know, I thought you, you I rolled know. 11, though, with advantage. Well, so that's not going to happen. Uh, okay. The first attack's going to miss. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and roll again. I roll it again, damn it. I know. I'm sorry. Uh, natural twice. That feels That better. is going to hit. So let me let me draw your card real fast. Um, ba -ba -ba, critical hit. Let's see here. This is a bludgeoning weapon. Yes. Double damage. And it does Double a, damage. Just a gut punch. I don't know if that one you want to flake that. Punch. Somebody. We'll see. All right. How much damage you do? So it will only be a Your three. Gut. So six damage. Because <laughs> I get doubled. The so twelve. You know. Well, 12. it's only it's only it's only three. And double that six. Oh yeah, yeah. So yep, six. Yep. yep. You're right. Because because the fail card. Because the fail card. The oh. crit. Oh, I'm sorry. Crit. That is uh, <laughs> very disappointing. That's yes. True. <laughs> I will. I will take my club and kind of just like kind of do a lower headed. Yeah. He got, do his he gun. I guess. As he he's blind. He's like oh and he oh oh and yeah. Um, since you crit, you do get uh, one well, no, of you, you bonus action. I raised. use my bonus action yeah, already. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that'll be the end of your that turn. That should be my turn. Okay. Yes, my effective turn. It is, it was effective indeed. Uh, Velry, it is your cool. turn. So, from where I'm standing, there's no like actual entry, right? No, there is not. Now, and you then... are you are at a you, there is a window right next to you. Mm -hmm. I will say you would know that. I mean, you're strong as shit, especially when you rage out. You could, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be easy, but it wouldn't be difficult either for you to rip a hole, just rip it a little bit larger to squeeze through if you want to. I'm just throwing it out there. Or you could try something else. Um, and I saw Vaughn and the lady like go back 
yes. the, behind. Yes, you did. Now I will say, Valerie, if you if you want to think about this, these windows go all the way down the building. So you're just kind of towards the front. Mm-hmm. You could move down the side and try to get in if you'd like. That's what I was thinking. I was okay. gonna try and bust in where. Okay, you kind of move down the way. Um what's your movement? Forty five? Yes. Forty five. Okay, I'll get you to the thirty mark. That's that's okay. about how how many feet down the building you'll get till you're past the um, the kind of roped off section and you you can see inside. And before you break in, um, I'll let you you what you you kind of glance in and you see the uh, you see Van kind of scrambling around. Um, there are like cots set up back here. This is the the. Uh, the, the sleeping place, I guess, for all these. And it, there's a shitload of them. There's cots everywhere. Um, and it's it looks like, a, you know, like a like a camp set up, uh, like, you know, summer camp. It's it's ridiculous. Um, but you you see all that and you see that there are there's a uh, several rooms towards the back um, that you've seen before. One of them was the closet that Trist found some interesting items in as well as a bunch of books. Um, that door appears to be closed. Um, however, there is a second door that you guys have never investigated before. And the door is currently swung open. And you see a man pulling his pantaloons on, scrambling out, as well as another lady that is walking out behind him, very similarly dressed to the one you saw a moment ago. Mm. <clears throat> but that's a separate room from where Vaughn yeah, they're like is. They're, well, it's the same room but it's like towards the back you wouldn't really be able to get to that area you might be able to get to Vaughn if you were to break through right here um, would it be like a surprise attack since you know busting through on the side there no you're gonna rip no. through the side of the building so no I'm sorry Oh, the surprise is over. The <laughs> surprise is over. Uku will surprise the shit out of everybody. But I mean, you know, he doesn't know I followed him. It's not going to happen. I feel like I'm just going to do it. Okay, I'll tell you poorly, what. I'm going to do it. I'll tell you what. I'll, t- I'll give you this. I will give you this. If you want to give me an acrobatics check, because you are thin, huh. you give me an acrobatics check to squeeze through here. I'll let you carry your stealth roll, and I'll, you'll at least get your stealth advantage. But you have to make the check. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and give me acrobatics check then. Uh, you know what? In my head, I was like, you know what? I'll make this a fifteen. So you're good. Um, <laughs> you. So almost very like, uh, very almost like a thief in the night. Mm. Valerie, Valerie kind of reaches and just kind of easily pries aside the uh, the kind of wood uh, slats that, that are the outside of this window kind of and just kind of slides. It gets kind of almost like a contortionist, a, a movement that a normal person should not be able to make. Kind of snaps her away, crawling across the ceiling like a spider. Mm. Mm. Um, like it. You get above va- a van. He has no idea you're there. Um, so you can do as you will at this point. You are 20 feet above him. Mm. Um, is the lady right next to him? Am I going to have to like... No, no, no. No, the uh, the lady and the other guy that was uh, that were having coitus are oh. pretty far away. Okay, so yeah. he's just by himself. Te- okay. Yeah, he's technically by himself. He's scrambling. He's like... Ah, ah, ah. He's freaking out. Ooh. I'm going to rage out, you know, it's no flash course. black. Here we yes. go. And I just try and do this thing, jump down on him, which okay. I don't have to make another roll for that. Um, yeah, go ahead and give me a, well, what did we do before? I think oh, it was dexterity seventy oh. throw, I think is what we did. Uh, is it? All right. I can do that too. I don't remember. Yeah, it was. It was a dex saving throw. I get a dream. And he fails miserably. So he's going to take some fall damage on this. And probably you're going to rip it in half, I'm sure. Ready? So what did you get what? for your deck save? Oh, he, I thought he said, okay. So I do need, okay. Yeah, yeah. Rolling. Rolling now. 
Ooh, not great. Not great. So you are going to take a, just a little bit of damage, but it's not going to be that significant. You're going to take not but shit, nine points of bludgeoning damage, reduced to four, four for you. Okay. But Vaughn is going to take nine points of bludgeoning damage as Valerie drops on top of him. Um, mm-hmm. You... <laughs> How would you like to do this, Valerie? Yeah. He has um, eight hit points. Okay, well, poor man, you know. Son of a bitch! <laughs> um, you haven't even used your action. I know. <laughs> just dropped on top of him, killed him. I mean, you know, I'm just going to be like, look at him, really disappointed that I didn't get to slice and dice him up a little bit. So yeah. I'm just like disappointed and like, well, that was. Forgetful and go so, for the um, other guy, I guess. So I'm going to um, say he's standing there and you kind of drop down and it's like your feet land on his shoulders and he just crumples underneath you like an accordion. He just goes, ah! <laughs> and his legs smash down. It's really disgusting. And you're like, you're like, ah! But you do see the uh, the the guy and the, um, the more scantily clad lady. They're, mm. they're probably... 40 feet from you so maybe oh, next turn get that. to him but okay. for now um that's where you see them and they looked like, oh a little shocked um seeing you drop down and crush somebody you still technically have your action if you'd like to do anything else since i'm right don't i have to take it, you can either well i'm gonna say that you uh you took damage so you're so okay. you're good. The oh, rage yeah. persists. Okay. Now, okay. Um, but you don't have to use your... If you don't have any ranged attacks you can do, you can take mm-hmm. the dash action and you could cover the distance if you'd like. Or you can mm-hmm. go back in the room you were in. That's up to you. Whatever you want to do. Um, um, that's a great... How far away is that? Yeah, it's just yeah, right I'm, behind you. As um, far as I know, they're nothing bad to me, right? So... As far as you know, I mean, you, you don't know, you don't know. Yeah. But I'm blinded by rage, so I'm going to dash towards them because okay. I'm real upset that okay, I didn't so get we'll to We'll say you back. take the dash action and you, 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 you kind of rage toward them, smashing aside cots and just throwing them aside um, in your, uh, your bestial um, rage right now as you move mm-hmm. towards them. Okay. okay. That will be the end of Valerie's turn. Very eventful. Killed my main bad guy. It's fine. I'm not upset about it. That'll bring me to um, Moog. It is Speak, uh, speaking of things that don't upset your you. Turn. Yeah. yeah. Never, never have I ever upset. Never have you ever, Moog. Never. Have yeah. You. Um. So, where are we anyway? You are at a window. You were next to Rogar. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. God damn it, Moog. <laughs> what are you doing, Moog? Son of a bitch. I'm going to climb through the window okay. more gracefully than Rogar. It's broke open at this it. point, yeah. and you're kind of like, mm-hmm. oh, and you just kind of yeah. pull yourself in. Yeah. And there's the Ronin that he went after, and what else? Uh, there's a Ronin standing there. There are four more, um, quote unquote, um, pirates, like the standard guys you've been fighting, yeah. at a table that haven't had a chance to collect themselves yet. Ukul is in the center of the room as well. Um, he looks like he's making a beeline towards this, towards the um, the kind of flapped curtain area that you saw Vaughn run through. Uh, so I will. Um, th- does it? Does Rogar have the Ronin handle? The Ronin. The Ronin looks blind. You're not sure. Yeah. Rogar okay. just came up and just kind of the first swing he missed horribly. The guy he just stumbled out of the way. Kind of the second one he kind of hit him in the stomach. Yeah, they kind of doubled over for a moment, but he's All still right. he's still there. Now the dude looks hurt pretty bad. Yeah. Well, I'm uh, gonna go to the. I'll go over to the pirates. Okay. So you kind of have a chance to react. You kind of yeah. slide over the. Um, you know, why don't you give me an acrobatics check to Mo? To really though. The distance. Yeah. Let's really? do it. Let's do You're, it, Mo. You know, Rogar did it. You need to do it. Oh, how about that? Fuck, <laughs> Moog, natural 20. <laughs> I just step right over it. Uh, sorry, Rogar, you kind of look back as Moog very gracefully, despite his eight foot size. He kind of he kind of grabs a hold of the top of the counter and just kind of just kind of slides across it. Dukes of Hazard. Yep, Dukes of Hazard slides across. Um, you make it to the to the first to the table and it's kind of knocked over already. And the first guy is like struggling in his hip to pull his sword. He's like, oh! 
Do what you want. Doesn't Mo get a critical card since uh, Rogar got a critical for his? I don't know if it counts as an attack, though. That wasn't that? An attack. It wasn't was... an attack for uh, Rogar. Well, the, the fail cards are also for abilities, too. I'm pretty it's sure. Critical. critical cards are not for abilities. They are All right, so uh, I'm going to take one. I'm going to take a shot at one of them. I'm going to swing at him with my hammer. Oh, yeah, that's going to hit. That will definitely hit. Go and roll right, damage. So here goes damage for the first guy. Seven. Okay. He looks hurt. He's still up. Looks hurt. And uh, just to just to scare him real good, I'm gonna take an attack at one of the other guys. Okay. Okay. You kind of reach past him with your super long arms. Sixteen. Um, that will hit. Okay. Great. Eight. Eight points of damage. Both of them look hurt as you kind of mm -hmm. smack one and then smack the other. Um, would you like to do anything else, Moke? Uh, no, I'm going to hold the line here and finish these okay. guys off for the next round. All right, Moke. Um, that will bring me to the veteran. I got to make sure he doesn't make a save for this. Uh, uh, foot cone. Just what? Conscious until the end of your next turn. Okay, so it's the, until the end, well, he's dead, but it's not his turn yet, so it's still there. Shit, so he's still blind. Yeah, he, and there's no save. He's just blind, so there's no save. So he's very, he's like, ah, ah, and he's going to, at disadvantage, he's going to swing at Rogar because he's next to him. Uh, let's see here. It's probably not going to work. Disadvantage. Boom. One of them would have been a natural 20. Uh, 17? That hits? That hits. I'm sorry, Rogar. I, I don't know. I'm sorry. It's a disadvantage. I don't know how that still hit. Um, we'll roll the other one, too. Since he's going to make three attacks. Uh, eight's going to miss. And a... Sixteen? That hit? Sixteen misses. Sixteen misses. misses. Okay. All right. Is the seventeen a glancing blow? Seventeen would be a glancing blow. Okay. So that's gonna be it's gonna be like quarter damage anyway. Um, so yeah. let's let's do that real fast. So the only hit is going to be eleven reduced to five reduced to two. <laughs> so we're gonna hit, hit two two points of damage, Rogar. Is he? He starts flailing. He has he has his uh, his elongated katana, and then the, the shorter one. He starts ah, and he, he manages to nick you the first time. Just like just a, a small little little bead of uh, of a blood pulls out, and he he's swinging wildly as you kind of mm, easily dodge aside. Um, that's all he can do. However, the guy that uh, the two the the four men that are next to Mo are now going to take their turn. Um, let's see here. 16. Misses with your shield. Natural one. Definitely going to miss. Let's go and move a car for him. Oh, Jesus. D6 penalty. I don't think it's going to matter. I think this dude's going to be dead soon anyway, but I'm going to keep that in mind. So that's bad. Um, third guy, a five is going to miss. Jesus. Fourth guy, a 12. All attacks against Moog as these guys begin to swarm on Moog. Um, all of them missing. Just Moog's slap, smacking aside them with his shield. And they're all, they're all starting to surround him and they can do nothing. And I'm laughing too. Yeah. At yeah. It. yeah. Of course, Moog is laughing as he Ooh. does so. Um, Velry. The Lot guy that just flies. pulled his pantaloons on is going to make an attack <laughs> against Velry with a 13, which is going to miss. He kind of runs forward. Ah, very feebly misses. Um, no damage. A, another individual Velry that you did not see before kind of stumbles out of the same room 
Um, who knows what was happening in there? And he's gonna, oh, oh fall. shit! And you see him reach down, and he is fumbling. Let me make sure. Fuck yeah, he's fumbling right now. He doesn't get it loaded. He has one of these large black powder rifles in his hand, and he's trying to load it um, at the door. It's not loaded yet. So that is it for him. Um, that brings me back to the top of the round with Tristan Varel. Um, your turn. 30 feet of movement gets me to the door. It does. And if I dash through the room... But as soon as you get to the door, right yeah, next to the guy you, there, isn't there's there? a blinded Ronin. He's just kind of like this, and he's been trying try to fight Rogar. He looks heavily wounded, but he is there yeah. still. He'll try to hit me, though, if I run, if I dash past him. It will be a disadvantage, but yes, he will probably attempt, you would think. Uh, all right, I'll just uh, try to dispatch him with a firebolt real quick, then. It will be a disadvantage. You're in melee. I'll take a s- 10 steps back. Well, hold on. <laughs> You have advantage, but then you're at disadvantage, so it's a straight roll. Because he's blind, so you get advantage. 24. 24 to hit. That definitely hit. Go ahead and roll damage. 11. 11 points of damage. A vicious blow, point blank. Trist, you kind of spin up and send a firebolt. It streaks through his chest, comes out the other side. Oh! oh. Shit, scorpion he's, style. Yeah, he's still standing. Um, he's a hardy individual, but he looks Fuck. wounded. That's my turn. <laughs> That's your turn. Trist, you're like, and you're like, yeah. And he's like, oh, ah, ah. And he's still <laughs> standing there next to you. Um, all right. That's the end of Trist's turn. Um, I forgot about Ukul. Ukul is going to, um, take a step through the curtain. Slums it aside. Vaughn! And he looks down and sees the accordion the crumpled form of the former hobgoblin cook that Velry just smashed like a bug. Ugh. It's disgusting. And let me see. He does. He sees it. He looks down and he reaches down and rips apart Vaughn. Just kind of grabs his top half and throws it aside. And out falls a a withered piece of like um, it looks like driftwood. Um, it is somewhat decently long. Vaughn had it hidden somewhere in some in something. Who knows what? And as he grabs a hold of it, it begins to stretch and forms into almost like a staff with a human skull at the head, a humanoid skull, I should say, not a human skull. Um, at the head of it that has almost like barnacle like crustaceans across it. Yes. And he looks over toward where Valerie is and let's see here. Let's see what uh, Ukul can do. Yes, he can do that. Yes, he can. Okay. So he will do a level one yeah it's gonna do that let's see a 14 that hits roll damage not a lot of damage only five points of damage so he doesn't do enough to actually kill him however very um you don't see this um some of the other because your backs to him some of the other people in the room behind you um probably moog uh, really, is the only one. Maybe Triss, because Triss isn't completely focused. You would see his Ukul as he grabs a hold of his staff, his other hand, the one that had not turned into like skeletal sludge a minute ago, which is reformed. Um, you see wa- almost like water begin to drip down his forearm and coalesce into a bead in his hand, and then he shoots it forward, almost like a uh, a very precisioned um, spray of water. Uh, shoot darts out at lightning fast speed pierces through the man with the black powder weapon through i mean through the shoulder a little off mass a little off center he's just, ah! and you see that there's almost like a a radiant burn where it it uh it, it went through his shoulder he looks heavily wounded but he's not down 
Um, however, Valerie, you see that there's almost like a, ca- a crackling of electric static energy across the wound, and you might have advantage on attacks against this individual right now, as he has been marked. So that is the end of Ukul's turn. Let me make sure I write that there. Write it down. Five points. All right, so that will bring me to the ladies. Uh, the lady that attempted to mess with Ukul at first, I was going to stumble out. Ha! Ha! She looks over. She sees she sees the back of Moog as Moog's fighting off four men. She looks to her left and she sees Trist. She sees Rogar. Let me roll a D2. She looks to Rogar. And she says, Hey, big boy. I think you're fighting for the wrong team. And I'm going to need uh, Rogar to make a wisdom saving throw. I know she's casting a spell. Interesting point of fact. You know what magic looks like when it's being cast, Trist. This looks like it is not magic. This is an innate ability. Oh, all right. Wisdom saving throw, huh? Wisdom saving throw. All right. Ten. Ten. Rogar fails. Sorry, Rogar. Damn. You fail. Rogar is charmed. Oh, boy. Rogar... Uh, even in your rage, uh, and she and she just says, "Why don't you kill that one right there?" And she points towards Trist. I will go deal with your friends. And she steps through the. She goes to move towards Ukul at this point. You have your you have your orders, Rogar. Mm-hmm. You are to kill Trist in a moment. Okay. All right. Um, that brings me to the next one, who is um, standing next to Velry. Looks towards Valerie. Oh, sweetheart, you're batting for the wrong team. I need you to give me a wisdom saving throw, Valerie. Twenty-one. Holy shit! Natural twenty. Natural twenty. Mm-hmm. Valerie. Mm-hmm. Valerie, as as you hear a whisper to you, you feel almost like a pull, and it might make you even more angry because you remember. You know, a time when people used to mess with your head previously and you shake it off and you see just for a moment there's a twinge of fear in her eyes her eyes also go black as yours as they did mm-hmm. before and that's all she can do she's going to take a step back and i'm showing and my things at her like yeah you knows, are she's she's like, ah, you you take care of this i need to get the mistress and she begins to back away. That was is that an opportunity time. attack, though, for me? Yeah, you were within range of both of them. Go ahead and give me an opportunity attack. Mm. I'm upset. <laughs> um, so is it advantage on the roll for attack, or? Uh, or is... Sure, why not? You can do that yeah, if you're if you're if you're willing to go reckless. Yes. Willing. Okay. Mm, natural twenty. Holy shit! I'm pulling card. All right. Your claws. Ignore this roll I'm doing right Are now. Are those considered slashing? Um. Ma- yes. Right. What, what the hell roll. is this? Why is that? Uh... Oh, okay. No. Okay, that's good. Slashing damage. All right. Maximum damage. So don't even worry mm. about damage. You just roll, mm. you just get max damage. Uh, whatever your possible max is. So 10 plus 12 since I'm raging, right? So 12 points. Mm-hmm. So geez, you roll max that many, all, all that time, all the time, because it's ridiculous. All right. 12 points of damage as you you rake your claws out, slicing her across the tris. Ah! And um, cleaving into the flesh. Bell ring. Um, as as you yes, mm-hmm. go ahead. Could I've actually like would that knock her out by chance or oh definitely that... definitely not. Okay. Oh okay. nowhere Just... near. You slash into her and you see blood begin to pull out. And, you... <sighs> and okay. her skin reddens. 
Okay. As it does, she, uh, you see two horns come up out of the top of her head and a large leathery flaps of wings flap out the back of her back. And you're not sure what this is, but it looks demonic in nature. Mm. I shouldn't have done that. And she back, continues to back away from you, Valerie. And that is, uh, that's the end of her turn. <laughs> so that brings me to Zoon. It is your turn, Zoon. Okay, so I think I'm having a pretty good night. Um, yes, you are. Those guys are gone. Yeah, they're I gone. You're, you're outside. Ahead. You saw Trish run inside. He's got this cover, right? Yeah. What are you doing? He's, what are you going to do, Zoon? It's pretty powerful. Um, yeah. I'm going to start making my way up toward the entrance, mm-hmm. trying to be a little bit as stealthy as I can be with all the ruckus going on there. Okay. Um, good. Just for fun, give me a stealth check. We'll see. This <laughs> goes. Dun, 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 dun. I feel like 007. Mission Impossible. Okay, stealth. Here we go. Oh, I'm super stealthy. Jesus, 20. <laughs> yeah, okay. You know what? Surprisingly, Zoom, extremely stealthy. Um, as you kind of crouch down and uh, you don't think that you are you are seen whatsoever. Perfect. You begin making your way in that direction. Um, did you move the time before? I don't think you did. did I was you? near Tristan. Like I moved You're up to Trist? Tristan. So like, you, were, you, were you keeping pace with Trist though? No, I was not. Okay, so you'll you we'll say that you're 30 feet from the door. Then you don't have a clear view of everything inside. Um, I might give you visual on the Ronin. Okay. And Rogar, who doesn't quite look right. Yikes! Well, you know, I have no idea what's about yeah, to happen know. there. So, with the other one, with the Ronin, he looks a mess, right? He does. He looks really bad. He's, he's on the verge of death, in fact. Oh, my God. Well, then I'm going to use Vicious Mockery. And just be like, <laughs> you look worse than the bugbear smells. Ooh. And, yeah. Wisdom saving throw. I got a feeling he's going to fail this badly. Wisdom 15, yes. Please I fail. got a 15. I'm sorry. Ah, damn. It's okay. However, um, I th- think he still takes half damage from the psychic damage. Go ahead and roll it. Mm-hmm. But he does not run away. I don't see that he gets half though. Is it not? Yeah, that's, that, that, that's that's dissonant whispers. Oh yeah. shit! I was thinking dissonant I mean, whispers. Sorry. I would love that, but yeah. yeah. Sorry, no. He, yeah. He no, you're right. It. It's the it's the cantrip. <clears throat> so yeah. So no. Um, unfortunately, he hears it. And he kind of. <sighs> oh, he's having. He a has hard no time. idea who I'm talking about. Um, he doesn't. And actually, I should mention that he actually got his vision back. So his eyes, eyes kind of clear. <gasps> and he kind of looks over, seeing the massive Rogar, and then also. Um, uh, Trist. Thankfully, he doesn't know that Rogar's turn, so uh, let him do something stupid. All right. Yeah, not quite. Can I throw? Um, I'd like to throw for my bonus action my Bardic Inspiration onto Tristan, please, before I okay. forget to do yeah. that. You kind of sing out <clears throat> Trist. You know, something like that, maybe. I don't know. You got this, man. Yeah, exactly. Looking good. You feel inspired, Trist. You do. You kind of feel a little, huh, yeah. And uh, it's just in time because it's Rogar's turn. And it's time for Rogar Smash. So you are charmed, Rogar. Um, yeah, he, he rolls poorly all combat, and then he'll start. Not only are you, I know. Now, I, was sh- I need to make this imperative. Not only are you charmed, Rogar, but you're charmed for an mm-hmm. entire day. Shit. Uh, do I get any saves later? Um, or just charmed the entire day. You're charmed the entire day. There's no save. Fuck. There's this is a one and done. That is brutal. All right. Yes, it is. It's well, bad. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not him unconscious. It's really bad. <laughs> gonna have to, and it's gonna take you guys a while. Uh. All right. So. All right. Uh. I guess I go up and attack Trist. Oh. Ooh, um, if you if you take damage, you get to make a save. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to roll an attack. You are going to crush Trist now, and I want you to do it. I want you to <laughs> okay. do it. I'm going to roll, roll a great club attack here. It's going to hit. That's definitely going to hit. Crush Trist, please. Do it now. Right, uh, You know, Great Weapon Master? I didn't Great, I didn't great Weapon Master. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, unless you tell me to. I mean, uh, it's I up to you. It's up to you. <laughs> I'm not going to do it at full. 
Uh, that'd be uh, seven points of damage, yeah. Seven points of damage, Trist, as Rogar smacks you across the face with his club. Nope. You have, you have um, second attack, Rogar. All right, I'll roll again. After 20, come on, after 20. Uh, 21. Still hits. Smack him again, Rogar, do it. 10, no, 12. 10. It's 12 points of damage, Trist. As Rogar just begins to crack, crack. Oh! Ah, the uh, blood smattering across the, across the 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 entryway of this uh, this place. Zoon, you oh, you kind of cry out for a moment, remembering you've been on the receiving end of that before. <laughs> a vivid flash of horror in your mind. The Ronin's kind of eyes kind of narrow. <laughs> he might know what's up. Um, that is unfortunately the end of Rogar's turn. Uh, yes, however, yes. Velry, it is now your turn. You have three individuals. <clears throat> you have the one of the the guy with the pantaloons who tried to stab you. Mm-hmm. Did nothing. You also have the what is known as a succubus that has taken steps away from you that you sliced into, as well as a man with a black powder weapon that is right. just about ten feet from you. Um, I guess I figured out someone's behind me, so you right, did. Help. Yeah. You, you can tell it equals behind you. Yeah, I'm gonna check out the easy targets first, especially the guy with the gunpowder. You said I had like advantage. You do him. have advantage without even reckless, um, because of the uh, the attack that was made on him. Go ahead and make You're trying attack. to mess him up real quick. Okay, you kind of scoot over. Um, we'll say you make kind of a lunge toward him. Go ahead and make an attack roll. That definitely hits. Um, don't worry about damage. The dude only has like, I think he has like four hit points. So you've killed him. Um, so he's dead. Uh, he before he before he can even reload his damn weapon. This is bullshit. Um, he's sitting there. He's trying to reload it. Uh, 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 as you kind of lunge out, slash him blood burbling out of his throat. He just falls dead on the ground. Um, the other guy next to him. No. No! Oh, it's happening. Go ahead and make your tackles. <laughs> you start ripping into these the rest of these guys. Reckless. Why not? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Not. Twenty-one is going to hit. Um, go ahead and roll damage because you might. You do a lot of damage sometimes. Nine. Nine. Not quite enough. Almost. Almost enough. You almost killed this guy with a strike. You still have two more though. I know. Oh, that's gonna miss. Go and roll again. Last one. So rude. I will hit. Um, don't even worry about rolling damage. He has he has one hit point left. So you kill him. Can I? Can I actually? Um. Well, I rolled an armor. I'm gonna fang bite him, but it's like, but I would have had to roll it a different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too yeah. late now. You've killed okay. him already. It's too late. As you slice into the one guy and then <sighs> start ripping into this guy, ripping him into pieces quickly. <sighs> the succubus is about ten feet from you, kind of backed up against the wall. <sighs> you yeah. still have your movement, um... Valerie, if you'd like. Do I hear, like, I hear all the ruckus in the other room, right? Oh, yeah, you do. I'm not convinced I can take her on by myself. Ukul is behind you. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Uh, Oh, my God. Okay. I guess I'm going... I'm going to just back up towards Ukul. Okay, you kind of like, kind of like looking at the succubus as you begin to kind of, uh, kind of scamper away across the beds. Um, do you want it? You can. You have enough movement. You can get all the way to him if you want. Or I mean, you just tell me where you want to be. Do you want to be next to him? I was thinking next to him. Um, okay. If I if I'm there, would I still, if, in case she flies away or something, um, would I still have movement to like get back into the room and 
get someone. Oh yeah, yeah, help. yeah. Okay. Yeah. You kind of move back. I'll just stand next to him. Stand, kind of, kind of move backwards. All right. Um, as he kind of, he's standing, he's standing tall. Oh, as he sees the the transformation before you. Um, that will bring me to Mo Brajon. It's finally your turn. Yeah. So I still have the four, the four. You saw four guys surrounding yeah. you right now. All right. Well, about to probably have two less. Uh, I'm going to take a swing at uh, the first guy I hit last time. Okay. Go ahead and give me an attack roll. And uh, let's see what we do with that. Oh, 16 hit. That hits. Okay. Roll damage. For 11 Oh, yeah. 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 You definitely, you cave this guy's skull in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Next. And his friends. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Same. The next guy that I hit the next time. Okay. Uh, that's going to be for a dirty 20. That definitely hits. Go and roll damage. 10. Same thing. You kind of smack one guy and then it kind of uh, just across, kind of hit this guy square in the chest, caves in. <laughs> and he kind I was of actually, you know, I was just really trying to shake, you know, dude face off my hammer and just yeah. hit the other guy. Yeah, by accident. Yeah, you're you're like, know, yeah. Rah, and you kind of sling it back and the guy's yeah. like trying to get behind you and kind of hits him hard uh it falls over dead crumples across the uh yeah. the floor there's still two more standing next to you moke and so i look at them and uh i uh still have a chance to make a better choice is that gonna be the end of your turn you don't want to do anything else uh that's all i got I mean, you know bonus okay. actions or anything like that you got an action surge well you know let's see do i you should I do have the action surge, so you know, let's just go ahead and see if we can finish these guys off. Yeah, go ahead and make me an attack roll, sir. Fifteen probably doesn't hit, does it? It's a glancing blow. Okay, so let's see if we're gonna. Oh, but for max damage, so that's pretty good. So that actually did six. Uh, six points. You normally would have killed this guy with the twelve, yeah. but yeah. you. So he looks hurt bad. It doesn't I'm doesn't gonna, quite. It kind I'm of gonna try to kill in one blow the other guy. The other guy? Okay, give me an yeah. attack roll then. Oh, uh, that's a 22. That definitely hits. Go and roll damage. For eight. So they're both roughed up pretty good. They're, they're, he's hurt. They're both, yeah, they're both hurt, kind of like the previous guys you just you just killed. Um, I gave him a half a second to make yeah. a different choice. Half a second, yeah. You know what? Oh, nah. oh, and then you <laughs> I am across the both of them. You, you're, you're kind of yeah. fighting over the scattered um, betting table uh, where they were playing their, their, uh, their gambling games before. Um, that's the end of Moog's turn. It is now the Straw Hat Ronin's turn. Straw Hat, um, seeing Rogar the way he is, uh, sneers. <laughs> and he looks over towards Trist, and he's gonna stab him. Um, let's see here. It's a twenty-one. Or four points of damage. Not a lot. Second attack. 21. Or eight points of damage. And the last attack is a 19. Yes. For four points of damage. Are you still standing, Trist? Yep. Trist is still standing as he kind of slices out, and you, you, you somewhat dodge a little bit, but you're still getting you're getting slashed after Rogar just pummeled you. Ah, oh, ah. Oh. And that is the end of the Ronin's turn. That brings me to the two remaining guards that are still standing. Um, they are going to attempt to, uh, I guess, just hit. Moog. 18? Glancing oh, blow? That's a glancing blow. Okay. Yeah. Four. Yeah. It's not going to be much. God damn it. Three points of damage reduced to yeah. one. Uh, he should make a he should make a DC 13 deck save. Oh, shit. Are you going to? Are yeah. you going to yeah. rebuke him? Oh, I am. He's, he's, I mean, why not? Okay. That's it's, a. It's, it's at the end of the day. It's a 12. 
It's 12. Oh, so he fails. Go ahead and roll yeah, damage so, for it. Roll yeah, fast. let me go ahead and obliterate this guy with some lightning. That's 2d12. It for is. ridiculousness. Uh, nine points of lightning it's damage. It's more than enough. It is lightning damage, correct? Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. As you use your reaction to kind of, um, as you, you've got your, your shield and your hammer, and you kind of you kind of let your hammer go slack for a moment. And you reach down and grab the the rod as you take as you feel the pain surge as he kind of hits into you. It's not a lot of pain, but you just feel it a little bit. And there's a shock of electricity that spirals out um, from the rod itself and then smacks him in the chest. Ah! And it kind of surges, surges through him and out his back. There's an explosion. And he just kind of falls over dead on the attack. Uh, the second one to hit you was a 12, which misses. No, that, that's miss. Yeah. yeah. Which brings me to Ukul. Okay, let me make sure Ukul can do this. Um, that doesn't work. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. Um, it looks like. Ukul is going to turn around. He's going to look at Rogar. He's going to say, You! Stop this now! And you should make a wisdom saving throw, Rogar. Eighteen. Damn it, Rogar. That is Damn it, Rogar! A pass. <laughs> God damn it! As there are... Uh, there's like power laced into the magic that he shouts out towards Rogar and Rogar kind of moves and then he's still he's still affected Uh, and then he looks he looks over at the now revealed second succubus that is standing next to him that was moving towards him Ah, and that is the end of his turn which is going to bring me now through everybody to Tristan Varel. It's your turn, sir. Uh, bonus action, potion of greater healing. You grab a hold of it. You're, it's, oh. <laughs> Chug it down quickly, dribbling across your chin. Oh. What would you like my to heels do? back. What would you like to do with your action, Trist? Uh, my action is I'm going to Oh shit, I knocked myself unconscious instead. Let's not do that. Let's put yourself back. Uh, Action, I'm going to make a gesture with my fingers and as I put my hands together in a prayer motion and push them out, I am going to create three duplicates of myself. Okay. As I cast mirror image. Mirror image. Knowing that I cannot (sighs) find either of these two. There is three, well actually four. Uh, for Triss now, kind of uh, weaving in and out of each other in this in this space. Um, would you like to move Trist? Uh, no, because they're going to hit me either way. They incur two opportunity attacks. I cannot possibly. move as quickly as both of those two can. That's true. Um, all right. If that is, is that going to be the end of your turn? Uh, that will be it. Okay. As Trist be- go- goes on the defensive, it is now the succubus turn. Um, the one fighting Velry is going to um, fly towards you, Velry. And she is going to... Well, no, she can't do that. Because you weren't... You're not charmed. Let me make sure. I gotta make sure if this is possible. It's hard to expect. And Tarp's immune to, the, to this one's charm. Okay, so she kind of flies above towards the top, Velry. Flies over above you. So you're about, she's she's 20 feet towards the ceiling. I thought that matters much to you. But she looks down at Ukul. You, you, kill these things for me. And he needs to make a wisdom saving throw. Um, sure. It's not bad, but a 10 is not going to cut it, <laughs> as Ukul <Google. sighs> 
and me equal is charm now. Under the succubus is rain. Uh, that is the end of her turn. She's kind of flying her wings, kind of beating above Velry. The one that was next to Ukul, that looked like it was going to attack him, is instead going to um, dart. Well, yeah, going to dart towards Trist and try to rip his throat out because he's the he is he is right he is actually in the doorway. Where's Moog? Well, you're right. Moog is there. She, if, Mo, if Moog's there, now that she's revealed, her, her wings come out of her back. You know, the, the obviously the fiendish origin. Instead, um, seeing Moog there at the ready, she is going to beat her wings and move up towards right, the Moog. ceiling out I of melee range. Going on right now. You're right. You're right. You're right, though. I forgot about Moog. Uh, she'll move towards the ceiling. They're kind of both hovering towards the ceiling at this point. And she will be holding a action, uh, which then will bring me to Zoom. It's your turn, Zoom. Oh, let's see how this works. We still have the samurai there, right? Yes, he's still. He still. He looks heavily wounded, but he's still standing. Well, let's try this again. Have him do a Wisdom fifteen saving throw. Okay. Here. Very heartbroken if he makes it. That is a that's a fourteen. Uh, Barely fails. I'm gonna tell him. What are you smirking at, gizzard neck? And he takes six points of psychic damage. <laughs> six points of psychic damage. <laughs> Vicious mockery. <laughs> ah. <sighs> your is your 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 hateful words find purchase inside of his mind. He flinches. Um, he knows still, what he looks like. He's still standing. I believe he has disadvantage on his next attack is what it does. He does. He does. Yeah. Okay. And, oh my god. And you already have, Tristan, you have... Yes. Um, yeah, Bardic Inspiration. <laughs> Nothing's it, happened can I see Moog? Music yet. All right. Can I see Moog? Um, if you moved up, I would, I would, no. you could see Moog. You don't have Not to after. get, like, you, you don't want to move up. Well, I mean, Rogar, I just saw him attack Tristan. You did. Yeah, so I'm... Uh, mm, and I, I can't cast a spell as a bonus action, so I'm just gonna... See, Aura of Vitality, but... Do you? I mean, isn't that a bonus action? I Can you? Like, don't you have to use your action to cast it, and then it's a bonus action after that? Let me, let's read real fast. You do a cantrip and a spell, though? You can. Ooh. If it, if it is a bonus action. Yeah. I'll need to read it real fast. Aura of Vitality. Da, da, da. It is an action. You're right. It's an action yeah. to cast. So unfortunately, no, you can't use it this round. All right, then that is my move. I do not want to get closer to Rogar because I don't know what's going on yet. Okay. All right. You're kind of like <gasps> a little caught off guard, but that is going to be Zoom's go which will then bring me to the son of Amu. I would like you to crush certain somebody at this point. Make a tech roll, please. 14. Trist, 14 hits, I'm sure. It hits a duplicate. It does hit your duplicate, you rolled for it? Yeah. Okay, so oh, you, I have to roll for it. Roll, well, you have to roll, roll for it. it. You have to roll a d20, and I think if you roll above is it eight, right? yeah, That's the first one. Yeah, I have to roll above a six for the hit six. duplicate. So that's so, a nine. A nine. So yeah, it, so he does. He hits the duplicate the first time. I think the duplicate has AC too, right? It has an eleven AC. It's eleven. Yeah, okay. it's not high. Did I roll damage for it? Just to, to no, no. It just dis- it, d- it disperses. Yeah, so it now there's now away. there's 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 uh, two left. Rolling 18. I mean, that normally would hit. Go ahead and roll again, Trist. Let's see if it hits the duplicate or you. Oh, that does not hit the duplicate. It hits Trist this time. Because you. you right. uh, ah, I'm going to roll damage, Rogar. We, uh, nine damage. Nine points of damage as you get smacked across the face again. Ah, tooth might maybe comes loose a little bit. Doesn't feel good. That's Rogar's turn. Um, Velry, it is your turn. Okay, question. 
Yes. Can I see, step back up? Can I see what's happening with Rogar and Tristan? Yes, I will say because uh, everything's kind of moving on. The mm-hmm. the curtains have been ripped apart. The curtain that was there, that's where mm-hmm. Ukul was standing. So the, all of and the room is in visual now. And he, Ukul hasn't attacked me yet, so it's not like an opportunity to attack by run, right? Or you don't it? know. Ooh. You did hear the succubus instruct him to do something. Yeah. You're not sure. Well, my plan, tell me if I'll be able to do this. Like, okay. the perfect plan here. Perfect plan. Mm-hmm. Would be able to hit Oogle, because they get a wisdom. I mean, if he gets takes damage. I mean, not that has, you know, but yes. Right, but I know, yes. Hit him and then run over and hit Rogar. Would I have enough movement? And Like, if it all worked out perfectly for me? Um, I mean, yeah, yeah. You'd have, you'd have okay. plenty of movement here. Okay. That's my goal. Okay, so you're going to try to hit the hit the the turtle. Yeah, I'm mean, like. Okay, mm. are you going reckless? Oh wait, but then if I hit him, then that then he gets a reaction if I run. Mm. Well, that's if he's still an enemy. Oh, so many things. It's up to you. Okay. It's your decision. I think first because I see how bad Tristan's looking. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna. Hope for the best and run towards and try and hit Rogue our first. Okay, so you move past um, Ukul. Ukul is going to get an attack of opportunity. Okay. Luckily for you, he is not a war caster. However, he's going to try to hit you in the back with his club. Okay. Um, it's not an advantage because you didn't go reckless. However, let's see if this hits. That uh, that's unfortunately gonna hit. That's a twenty-one. Oh. Yep. And that's gonna hit. So that is actually going to be uh, nine points of bludgeoning damage. Mm-hmm. However, mm-hmm. you are also going to take uh, seventeen points of necrotic damage oh. as he hits you in the back. On you, you, you feel a burst, almost like necrotic energy, is summoned through the head of the staff, and bursts out your chest for a moment, <laughs> and you stumble forward. Well, that's 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, but that's reduced to ten because I'm raging, right? Uh, necrotic damage is not reduced oh. unless you are res- unless you're naturally resistant. I don't think no. you are. So no, that's just not. you just took seventeen damage just from from that. Oh, the bludgeoning That's damage is reduced. Two. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um. Finally. Can I? Huh? Finally, something hits you. <laughs> <laughs> Rude. Um. But I'm still going. Yeah. So I make it to Rogar, though, right? Yeah, you run, and the the succubuses are floating towards the ceiling. I might mind you, they're kind of mm. okay. You run, you run past Ukul after he smacks you in the back hard. You, ah, mm-hmm. you make it over to Rogar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, can I can I bonus action take a healing potion or? Yeah, you can. Is that... Yeah. Okay. Let me do that real quick. I love this. So good. Do you love it? I do. I like making Rogar beat things to death. It's so good. I was hoping I'd get Velry too. That would have been awesome. Ukul's a close second, though. Moog would have been better. I should have gotten Moog, damn it. Yeah, Ukul, the party healer, is a close second. (laughs) Yeah. Yep. Yep. (sighs) All right. All right. Um,. Can I reckless attack now, or is it too late to reckless? No, you can. That? You can. Okay. Yeah. Let's rip into Rogar. Let's do it. I mean, I'm just trying to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, of course. Well, damn. He's rip into him. He's standing there, being weird. He's hitting your man. What? Twenty-five to hit. That definitely hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Um. By the way, Rogar, Velry's claws are magical, so these this damage is That's not halved. Oh, <laughs> yeah, just so you know. <laughs> Go ahead and roll damage, Valerie. Ten points of damage. Ten points. Rips right. into you. Ah! 
Go ahead and make a wisdom saving throw, Rogar. <laughs> okay. Nine. Fail. So unfortunately, Rogar is still under the influence. I, you don't you don't know if you don't see anything change, Valor. He still has got that crazed look in his eye. I'm to hit him again. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Let's do this again. Let's let's rip into Rogar. Let's do it. Hmm. Gonna hit. Yeah, it's definitely gonna hit. Go and roll damage. Hmm. It's only eight points. Only eight time. points this time. Only eight, Rogar. Slashing oh, in your yeah. back again. Ah! Go ahead and make another wisdom saving throw. Five. Right. That's a fail. He's still under the influence, Valerie. Rogar's a beefy boy. Yes. He still looks rather unfazed by your attacks. That's unfazed. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. You're gonna attack him again? I have to. Yeah, yeah, you have to. I'm trying to, to knock him it's, it's for It's for his own good. So I'm not trying to it like really kill him, is. obviously. It but really I'm, is. You don't I'm want fine. you don't want a barbarian running loose. The juice is loose right now, and I love it. Yo. If you don't do it, 20, Tristan will get knocked 26 out. Hits. It's a matter of time. So, so go ahead and roll damage. So seven mm-hmm. points. Right. Go and make another wisdom saving throw, Rogar. 16. Oh, let me make sure. Let me make sure. That's a maybe. Maybe. Uh, DC of 15. You passed. Ooh. Rogar passed. The, the first uh. strike rips into him. Oh. 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 <laughs> Rogar, you realize you're like, oh, I've done it again. As <laughs> you look oh. down at Trist. The multiple Trists. Yeah. He's like, Tris is like holding his chest. Oh, like mm. Loki, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I still have one attack left, right? You do, Valerie. You do. I will I say, I will, I will say, um, there is the samurai right in front of Rogar. I would oh, let you yeah. kind of scoot around him. He's mm. still mm-hmm. technically standing if you'd like to make an okay. attack roll. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Fourteen. Fourteen will not hit the Ronin. I'm sorry. You slash out and miss somehow, Velvet. Um, um. Yes. I have inspiration have. that I haven't used. You do. Go ahead and roll it. Sure, why not? We'll say it's there. Jesus. Well, I just took it off. Yeah, ten. Yeah. You, you definitely that hits at that point. Yeah. It, it's not going to matter. He only had four hit points left. So, you... oh, I thought it was a reroll. I did that wrong. But what was yeah, she, just roll? the... <laughs> she just rolled oh, the yeah, roll? She rolled the DM inspiration and not the bar yeah. inspiration. Damn it. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, you only need it. He is his uh, his AC is a, 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 a 15. So you you hit him. I hit him. Yeah, well, okay. you you could roll a one and still hit him, and he only had four, oh. he only had five hit, four hit points. He's dead, so okay. it doesn't it doesn't dead. matter. All right, cool. Yeah. So, oh. dude's dead. Ripped into him, he's dead. So the only things left standing, there's actually still a there is still one individual trying to fight Moog, and uh, not for long though because it's Moog's turn, and then the uh, the two succubuses are still up. Moog is ready. Yeah. So my turn? Yes. You are in melee range with this individual. He's still kind of like oh, oh, bleeding yeah. profusely from several um, areas. So that's, oh, I'm afraid I'm not going to help him out with that one. Uh, so 11. 11 that misses. now. That misses. But a 19. 19 will hit. Go and put him out of his misery mode. Go and roll damage. 10, 10 damage. Yes, he is dead mode. As you <laughs> crush in the final head, you he, he, you swing and you miss the first time. Oh, and he's he looks hopeful as he looks up. Oh, and it kind of comes around backhand and it just right across the face. Yeah, I just wanted yeah. to give him some false hope. Yeah. Uh, and at the end of that, I will uh, I will shoulder my shield and my hammer and take up my crossbow. Yeah, you kind of you start getting it ready. You're like getting it getting it up. Not quite enough to do anything else with it right as of right now. 
but that is where Oak Broadjaw is. So that will then bring me to everyone else is dead. Um, ba 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 ba. Ukul. Ukul is going to now seeing all of you. Uh, traitors! Dredger will take you now. And he is going to cast. Let me make sure he can do this. Um, how many people can it cast, though? Third or higher. Okay. Um, at third level, he's going to reach out. And he's going to begin casting a spell. Um, Tris, did you want to do something before it finishes? Yeah, so. Okay, yeah, so just making sure. So he goes to, he goes like, oh, and he reaches his hand out towards, it looks like he's reaching out towards Velry and Rogar in particular. And as he does, the innate magic begins to unravel as it looks like uh, beads of water were collecting around his voice. And then they kind of scatter. <sighs> Tricks! Tricks! That is the end of uh, Ukul's turn. Um, that will then bring me to uh, Trist. It's actually your turn now. Yes. All right. Uh, four people, three people, four people. Technically, four Dude. with the turtle. The only enemy. people, the only, the only people left standing are mm. well. I should shouldn't quite say standing. Ukul is in center so stone. He's hostile as of now. There are two succubus yeah. flying. They're they're twenty feet towards the towards the ceiling, not yep. very far. They're within range of all of your attacks if you're worried about yeah. that. All right. Well, we're going to slow things down a little bit. Oh. As I pull out the stopper of molasses, mm-hmm. and drop a little piece out. Okay. And I need Ugle and the succubi. Okay. Is it wisdom? If- it's wisdom. wisdom. If Moog still had anybody on him, that person needs to make one. No, no, everyone else is dead. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's, you butchered everyone in this room. Uh, and third level spells. That is an 18 for one of the succubus. That is a six for the other one, so that one fails. And Ukul, wisdom save? Wisdom, but she's probably decent. Uh, that's a 22. So yes, yeah. uh, Ukul passes. One of the succubus is affected, though. Um, it looks like the one that Velry actually hurt is actually affected. Okay. Would you like to do anything else, Trist? Um, I am in the door, so I'll probably right. step to the side of the doorway, so I have a little bit of cover. Like, it kind of, somewhat out of view? Yeah. Yeah, you kind of like, oh, and kind of move out of view. All right. Uh, which brings us to the succubus. It is their turn. Um, the one that is controlling Ukul is up first. And uh, which is the one that Velry hurt. Um, she is going to uh, look over towards the the one that isn't hurt, that's slowed. Look over. Let's see if she can gauge. With a natural one, she can't tell that her friend is under some kind of spell. She kind of looks at her quickly and then looks back. <sighs> you, Tortle, kill the rest of them. I'm going for help. And she begins, um, she's going to attempt to dash towards the window that both Rogar and um, and Mo get entered into, skirting towards the roof and ducking under. I will make a uh, blah, blah, blah. She has 60 foot movement in this. And she's going to take the disengage action to not incur any attacks of opportunity from anybody. So she makes it and then actually makes it right outside the window. So she's technically outside, but within view of everyone. Um, The one that is slowed right now has a very limited amount of shit she can do. Mm -hmm. Um, She is going to... Um, ah, no, she can't do that because she'll get fucked up. Uh, she's going to stay where she's at and she's going to hold her action still. So that will bring me to Zoom. It's your turn.
Okay, so for the one that is trying to escape, um, and Trist, how much HP do you have left? Uh, I got less than half. Less than half. Okay. He'll be fine. I'm almost He'll be single fine. digits. He's breathing. He's on the other side of the door. He's like, <sighs> he's safe ish. Hyperventilating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be fine. Um, mm, God, this sucks. What are you going to okay. do? What are you going to do? So Chick is trying to fly away. Yes. The other ones are staying. The other people. one's inside the building. Slowed. Out, out of what? pretty much out of view of you because you'd have to enter to be able to see her anyway. Okay, but I can see the one that's trying to escape. Yes. Oh, God. Well, this is going to suck, but we'll see what happens. Um, have her make a wisdom 15 saving throw, please. 15. All right, let's see here. Please let her fail. That is a seven. Fail. Okay, let's dissonant whispers. Let's see if it's enough to kind of take her down a notch. All right. So 5d6. Oh, sweet Jesus. Okay, so she takes 19 damage. 19 points of psychic damage. She yes. Um, let's mm-hmm. see. And now she is... Oh, sweet Jesus. Just use a reaction to move further away. On a failed save, it takes one blah, 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 blah. It must immediately use its reaction, if available, to move as far as its speed allows away from you. The creature doesn't move into the obviously dangerous ground. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. So blah, blah. she escapes even further away soon. Sorry, as that was you, a good idea. As you, <laughs> as I didn't as take you it through. Cast the spell. And then she, her wings kind of, ah, ah, and they flap again nervously, and she flies 60 feet think even further away. I forgot about the that. Building. It's too late. Shit. It's happening. Yeah, it's done. I did it. It's I done screwed done. up. I, I own that. I apologize. Would you like to do anything else soon, bonus action wise? Bonus action. Well, throw another bardic inspiration on Moog if I can see him. Moog, you sure? Indeed, you can. I'm going to throw that on him. All right. That brings me to the son of Amu. It's finally your turn, Rogar. Uh, the uh, Psychomus is uh, uh, how far? Okay, the one that's escaping is yeah. going to be the equivalent of 80 feet from you. She's currently at ground level, but she is flying. The other one inside is hovering 20 feet above towards the ceiling. Okay. And Ukul is still charmed. Um, as far as you know, yes. All right, I'm going to go over to Ukul okay. and try to give him a wall up. Okay, go ahead and give me a attack roll. Okay. Too many recklessly. It's up to you. Mm-hmm. Natural twenty. Jesus. Let's roll. Let me get the card. All right. Bludgeoning damage is going to be triple damage. Fuck. And Ukul's right. gonna have to make a Constitution saving throw. Oh, all right. Okay. So a flat roll. The nine plus two. So um, eleven. 33 points of damage. 33 points of damage to Ukul. Yep. That's uh, that's, that's magical that's, bludgeoning damage. Yes, exactly. Oh, I know. I know. I know. Yep. As yep. you crack, oh, he has to make a constitution save. 15, which he passes. He does remain standing. He buckled. Okay. You, don't, you almost knock him off his feet, but he gets his, 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 uh, his feet kind of dig in. I'm aiming to knock out at least if I don't oh. you know, wake him up. Making a wisdom saving throw now. Okay. And he has a plus eight to this and he passes. Mm-hmm. Gotta, uh, uh, what are you going to do, Rogar? Okay, Rogar will then um, as he passes him, say loudly, um, 
one fleece. And he is going to, you said there's one above us, right? Yeah, about 20 feet above you. Mm -hmm. 20 feet above? Uh, I can't do much. Um, Rogar will, is there any kind of thing I can hop on or anything? Sure. To get close? Yeah, if you want to. All right, I'll try that. I'm going to try to jump up and hit it if I can, you know. Okay. But right. I would um, like to do it via. Go ahead and give me an athletics know. test. We'll see if you can, you can kind right. of spring off something. Okay, yeah. I'm aiming to spring off something. Yeah. yeah. Um, let me see. Do I get advantage? Because I'm raging? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a melee attack, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, strength. Okay. It has strength. So, yeah, you get advantage on this. Yeah. Okay. 23. You easily, you kind of go over to one of the, uh, to one of the nearby tables and you kind of jump, you kind of put your feet on top of it and you're already pretty tall. So you're somewhat in reach. So it's not a very difficult jump. You kind of, and you lunge towards her. Um, right. Before you do, Rogar, she was holding an attack. If somebody okay. came within melee range, um, it will be at advantage because you okay. are reckless. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is a 23 to hit. That'll it's, hit. However, it's only going to be seven points of slashing damage reduced to three. <laughs> As you All go right. into the range, ah! <laughs> go ahead and make your attack for a rogue card. All right. Oh. Uh, 16. 16 does hit. Oh, gross. All right. Uh, 10 points of damage. 10 points of damage. You crack, and then you kind of fall down, um, landing on the floor. She ah, takes a takes a blow to the gut. Looks hurt. Um, okay. Because beating her wings faster to try to stay aloft. Is, is this the one that Valerie attacked earlier? This is the one that's uninjured. The one that Valerie attacked is the one that flew out the window. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's injured now, but yes. I'm assuming that's the end of your turn, Rob. Yeah, that'll be the end. Yeah. Okay. Valerie, it is your turn now. What would you like to do? Oh, um, I'm just, did, did a Oogle come out of his? Yes. Okay. Cool. It did? Yes. Rogar smacked him across the face very hard and it drove him back to his senses, apparently. Um, I'm going to... What are you going to do, Valerie? What are you going to do? I guess attack the... Um... The one in the room still? Yeah. Um, go ahead and give me an athletics check to just jump towards the ceiling. It's going to be easy. You can jump like freakishly far anyway, and you get advantage. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be an easy check. Oh. A 12 is, is ironically, that's still more than enough. You just needed a 10. Oh. So easily, even a 20 foot jump for you is nothing. Uh, as you kind of, ha, and then you end up on the ceiling next to the creature. You go ahead and make your attack rolls if you'd like. Mm, I'm going to. Recklessly attacking. Of course, yeah. Why not? A 26 will definitely hit. <laughs> Go ahead and roll damage. 12 points. 12 points. Good, good, good. Go ahead and just go ahead and make all your attacks because okay. she does have a decent yeah. amount of hit points. Seventeen will hit. You said make the rest of the attack rolls. First? Yeah, yeah. Or go then? ahead. Yeah, go ahead and make the next three or next okay. two. Excuse me. Twenty-one will hit. <laughs> go ahead and roll the next one. Eighteen. 18, 18 will hit. Yeah, sorry, I missed it. So go ahead and roll damage three times. So, so 11. So 11. All right. Next one. 10. 10. 
Ooh, shit. Next one. Another 11. Wow. Uh, she looks on death's door. Not mm. quite dead. On the verge of dying. As Valerie kind of springs onto the ceiling. And it's like an upside down fight. Valerie's standing on the roof. And the other one's kind of flapping her wings. And she's just ripping into her. It's uh, it's horrifying. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that is that. Would you like to do anything else, Valerie? <clears throat> no. Okay. Yeah. That will then bring me to Moke. It's oh, your turn. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, <clears throat> the one that flew out the window? Yes. I'm going to draw a bead on her. Okay, you kind of move You move to where you have line of sight. You kind of yeah. move over and you... Yep. Draw All right, bead. I'm going to call a sharpshooter. Okay. And uh, use a superiority die to, right. to offset that. So, let me get this queued up. Here goes the attack roll. So that's a 21 minus 5. 16. Uh, 16. Did well, you 16. add your support superiority? I have not yet. Okay. Do you have to do it before or after, does it say? Uh, I think I have to do it to, to call it. Well, no, I, I can use my superiority die whenever I want to. No, I mean, does it? do you have to know if it hits or not? Does it, um, it doesn't let's see what is that it's a uh, precision attack you make a weapon attack roll you can expend uh before or after all right roll, so uh, a 16 any effects, uh-huh. 16 hits so you don't 16 have to hit so i'm just i just wanted to make sure because if you're yeah, going to use me it too. so yeah yeah okay it hits. and go so ahead. i'm going to go ahead and make the second attack yeah go ahead uh uh same sharp right. shooter. oh that's definitely going to hit also yes it will so that's 20 points of damage just right there yeah, go ahead and roll roll damage for the uh, the two attacks. Yeah, Jesus um, Christ. Yeah, forty nine points of damage. Moog. Yeah. You step over, and I want one to from eighty drop feet. Off each wing, eighty each feet wing. away. <laughs> Moog yeah. kind of steps over, <sighs> draws draws a bead. Trist is kind of look kind of looks over, sees sees massive Moog <laughs> step into view. <laughs> And then quickly loads in another bolt, and zoom. You impossibly fast. With it, my it's arms. it's fast as the creature is. The creature's trying to fly away, and suddenly, then just falls to the ground in the distance. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Two wings, and then it just <laughs> it just yeah. falls down. That's it. That's how you <laughs> I'm do assuming it. that's your 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 tone. Your turn, that, that's it. That's all I got. Yeah. All right. I just kind of look around, you know. I look uh, at the other one that where Valerie is. I don't. Yeah. I don't think I'm gonna. Then she's not gonna need me. But I'm looking at it. Yeah. Um. Very upset. It is now Ukul's turn, and he, uh, uh, and he looks up towards the creature, and he is going to, you, get down here. He as he shouts at it. And with a 14, the creature, uh, the succubus, suddenly it looks like it's going to do something. You're not sure. But something, some of its demeanor's changed. And he just stands there. Um, that then brings me to Tristan Varel. It is your turn. <laughs> I'm gonna firebolt this. Uh, so you kind of move. You kind of move, you kinda peek around. Give it ah, go ahead and give me an attack roll. Twenty-four. That hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Nine. Nine points of damage. Um, you see as it hits, um, and I will say this, Moog. Um, while you killed the other creature, you barely kill the other creature and you'll find out why um because trist as you fire the the firebolt towards the creature you notice that it just doesn't do as much damage as you thought it was going to like perhaps it's resistance to fire and it might be resistant to bludgeoning piercing and slashing damage that is not magical um as you i'm gonna gonna need a short rest in the back (laughs) you shoot you gotta ah, and it Ah, it still burns. It still it still takes some damage, just not a lot. I need to get some spell slots back. That's the okay. problem. So there you go. 
Um, that will then bring me to Zoom. It's your turn. Well, I guess I'm going to heal Triss because God only knows what we're going to encounter after this. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, I'm really feeling those uh, vibes of I, I need rest. Mm-hmm. Shoulder. Take 18 hit points back, Trist. There you oh. go. Shit. Oh, is that old cure buddy. wounds? Is that what I saw? Yeah. Okay. Okay. There you go. I hope you feel better. And I'm going to uh, look around and see if anyone's coming okay. to us. I'll say that, that was your action, so I'll be I'll I'll kind yeah, of I'll just... prep that for for okay. what's coming. Oh shit. Okay. Um. I forgot to have the creature move. It's now the, it, it'll be the creature's turn now. The succubus is going to willingly, well, not it's unwillingly, but it still incurs an opportunity attack, um, is going to uh, move down towards the floor. So, Valerie, you get an opportunity attack if you'd like to take it. As it is commanded by Ukul to ground itself. Yeah, we forgot to do its wisdom saves for taking damage. On oh, slow, yeah. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, I don't think it's going to matter here in a second. Yeah. I'll make your attack, Valerie. Do I get advantage on this or no? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were reckless. Yeah, sure. Angel, 20. Ed. God damn it. Oh, we get to draw a critical card, right? I'm drawing a card. I'm drawing a card for you. Eh, 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 eh. Ignore this current realm game. Um, maximum that. damage, and you get to roll the dice again. So go ahead and roll. It's not gonna. It's it's it is too much. It's too much damage already. What's your max damage? Um, twelve. Twelve. Okay. She has eight hit points left. Um, and your claws are magical, so <laughs> they bypass her resistances. So how would you like to do this, Valerie? Um, do is her. What I know of her blood is like poison to me. I don't think you have any experience with fiends, though you do. You do speak abyssal, don't you? So probably you probably have a little bit of experience with demons, and they are fiends in general. She speaks would, infernal too, doesn't she? She, she does. She, well. she does now, but yeah. she learned that from Jade. So this was prior experience before this. Um, you would know that they are evil creatures. Um from a different realm of existence that does not necessarily mean you could not drink from them if you'd like you know i just like to um yeah i just want to um i know i did it with my claws though, but it's fine on and you little know little just flavor. finish it off bite into the neck yeah, just kind to of be like grab into her, her shoulders like kind of where her wings are before, so she can't get away ah! and then you kind of pull her back and sink your 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 fangs into her throat um uh and she is i mean she's wearing almost no clothing um as you kind of and there's just blood everywhere uh it's like a really really gnarly horror movie um as you begin to uh suck from the mm-hmm. succubus's throat and that's where we're going to take our first break 